Hello, everyone. Welcome to Windbreakers Podcast. I thought I'd hang out in the bottom left for a bit. And uh, I'm Yahtzee Croshaw. I'm usually joined by Marty Sleaver and Sebastian Ruiz, but this time I'm joined by Sebastian Ruiz and Jack Packard. Ooh. Hello! Talk billing. We're here. Marty's, Marty's away. I don't know, maybe he ate mixed meats in a meal somewhere and had some terrible reaction. <laughs> but uh, what we're talking about this week are the games that we just can't get into. And the games and the genres we just can't get into that everyone else seems to like. And oh. uh, is it something wrong with our heads, or is it is subjectivity actually a thing? <laughs> where where to start on this? Would you say, boys? See, it's, as I was filling this out, that I think I actually hit a game a genre I didn't understand, and I don't think anyone else did either. And it was NFT games, where I went, I really I, I will... didn't understand those. And then, well, I don't think anyone yeah. did. No, I don't understand those as part of my broader not understanding what NFTs are about generally. Yeah, it's like the cherry on top of this. I don't get it, Sunday. But uh, all right, who who's you daring know, enough to insult let's, a fan Let's base? bounce off of NFT games because right. the first the first uh, category that I'd like to talk about is idle games. Is games ah. in which the majority of time you're not actually engaging in it. Uh, I I am someone who cannot do the whole i i cannot play a game even if it's a game like stardew valley or pal world over the weekend a, a game that has very little uh you know moment to moment engagement i can't then also listen to a podcast while playing that game i need to give 100 percent focus to a game um and so i cannot understand idle games no i'm i am the sort of person who likes listening to a podcast while playing games like stardew valley I was no, doing is yesterday one... evening even and i don't get idle games either <laughs> all right i like this all right so we got jack doesn't get it yasi doesn't get it and me popping on the camera real quick my oh. play of egg ink that i've kept running for the past two maybe three years it's a different sense of just like i want something quick to do here mm -hmm. but also has the uh, i guess that it's definitely fake the fake idea that like, ah, I've done this for the past two years and look at my progress. Cause I have like yeah. the mega, mega, mega super egg. And it's so bad that even though that's my longest running one over the weekend, I'll just find another one. This is, um, I don't even know what the hell this thing is called, but it's like the old block breaker games, right? You remember mm. those bounce balls bounce. They, they break bricks. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. I can, and I get money from money from those points, whatever to spend. And now I get an extra ball or a, more power or more speed. And then I just go away. And then I come back later. It's just, you know, I, maybe I'm just ill. That was definitely <laughs> in the games that I like. And other people will find me like I have a second head here. But I guess like what in, in my head, you know, ga games serve a purpose, right? Games uh, have a function. You know, the, that function is art and entertainment. And so, you know, my practical mind says I can be vastly more entertained via something else than something that I don't have to pay attention to. So how do you square that math? No, because I, I, I think about some idle games is that they're, they're almost no play games like um well well the whole thing with podcast games for me is that i have a very active mind and i can't just sit and listen to things i have to be doing something active with my hands yeah whether that be like shooting aliens in quake or running around to water all my crops <laughs> i'm not sure what it and is I, like it's... And I remember, I remember when idle games were a joke. I remember when uh, some dude released a joke game called progress quest which was yeah. uh yeah. I think it was like deliberately spoofing on EverQuest specifically, uh, where you just set up your your like character page with all your stats and mm -hmm. uh, and an XP bar, and then it would just the XP bar would just fill by itself, and you collect and random trash would appear in your inventory, and after a while it would go well, uh, inventory's full, back to town, and they would just automatically sell it all, and you didn't have to do anything, and it was a joke. It was intentionally a joke, but now it's a thing. Now idle yeah. games are a thing, just a thing yeah. to have running in the background, like some kind of executive toy. That's that's a good one. I was like, maybe it stems from the side of me that also went into stocks, not just like long-term stocks, but penny stocks, following trends, seeing growth, that kind of stuff. It just comes down to how much engagement you want because even they're fractured. 
where they go, I call them incremental games. Like there's a whole community where it's it's more about the math. It is like a spreadsheet and they're very active and like, all right, and if, and if I'm tweaking this right and it's it's 24 seven always on it. But then the ones that are like, oh, I don't want to do anything myself. Hmm. That's an idle right. game. And uh, yeah, there's I'll, idle I'll games and there's key. There's idle games and there's clicker games. Clicker games are the spiritual successor of when you were really, really bored as a kid and you get a calculator and you type one plus one and then you just see how many times you can press equals before you get bored. That's good, yeah. Uh, and it's, it, there's not much innovation in the in the formula because where can I know, you I mean, probably like Yahtzee's idle game. Didn't you play it, Jack? What? Oh, um, the button that ruins everything. Well, the point was that wasn't strictly an idle game. It was subversive, though. Yeah. If you're subverting something, does that still make you the thing you're subverting? Well, ask Wes Craven when he made the Scream films. I don't know him that well. So. When, when you are subverting expectations, though, then you are requiring at least a little bit, a modicum of engagement in order for someone to understand that they're being subverted. Whereas, the, you know, these games, these games that can kind of run in the background, you set a couple parameters and leave it be... It just seems like, and you know, this is a this is a, a very much a, a a me thing, a personal thing, uh, where it just seems like I would rather spend my time somewhere else. I, I suppose in that sense, it's also kind of like like gardening. I don't want to do gardening, right? But some people do want to like, and and I understand farming. Like, I got corn, mm -hmm. yeah. I can eat said corn, but not like, oh, here's my rose. You know, it is that sort of Ooh. satisfaction that they get of like, oh, I grew this long term, right? Whereas yeah. for me, it's like, yeah. oh, here's the thing on my phone that's not died. It's like Neopets. Well, one perspective I can offer is my wife's because my wife actually likes games like Cookie Clicker. Oh. And um, what she likes about it is not so much the act of clicking the cookie to make the number go up, but it's a much sort of broader term thing where she's interested in finding the most optimal arrangement of cookie acquiring things and most <laughs> optimal process for creating cookies she i've seen her like open a fucking spreadsheet and like write down like Mine? you know average cookie per minute for every like arrangement yeah. it's a uh, combination of uh, upgrades sure. yeah and it's like i guess it's kind of like speed running but on a more sort of meta level where mathematical it's like mathematical speed running yeah mathematical speed run finding the most optimal setup I that's, love that's the idea of, of a min maxer for cookie clicker. <laughs> oh, I'm no. sure they exist. I'm sure there's like speed runs and shit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially because like the more janky a, a, an, an idle game is, the less they fine tune it. And people like going, "Oh wait, I just found a way to like really cut down on my optimization here." Sure. Uh, the other ones are just a little too clean. It just like bounce off within a few hours. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And I like it's it's a game that that doesn't appeal to my particular sensibilities where like instead of idle gaming, I will sit in silence and stare off into nothingness for an hour uh, instead of filling my brain with an idle game. <laughs> so that's fair just enough. so that's where I'm going to start. I'll I'll rip off this band aid with idle games. I, I have uh, a much more controversial take later. So don't worry. Yeah, I think that was that was a pretty uncontroversial. Uh, things you don't get a mousse bouge yeah this is just to whet the palate mousse right. bouge. What? well uh, let's uh let's move on to my first uh genre that i don't that i've never gotten that i've never right. found appeal in and that's uh real-time strategy Ooh. Mm, wait okay it, it contextualize your like what you mean when you say real-time strategy. I don't want to get into all the philosophical I mean, musings, just the game you mean, Yahtzee. I mean games like Command & Conquer, StarCraft, Halo Wars, anything where you're an omnificent general, you have to create a build an army or whatever, and then in individually select your units and send them off to fight in a big war on the other side of the map against some dudes. Um, For some reason, like, I get so bored almost instantly. Like, I look at the map and I'm like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> There's so many math? things I could be doing. Did you like maths as a kid? You I guess not. Writing, obviously. I guess no, not, I, was, yeah. uh, I, was, I was one of the English language, like, blue-eyed boys. Every other, every other subject, I just did the bare minimum. But in English, the English teacher loved my ass. It's like, I speak the language, yeah. What about yeah. you, Jack? Did you, you like math? No, no. Uh, I, I didn't like a lot of school, though, so uh, I don't know if that's, that can count. 
I can be with you on real time strategy. Um, to me, and this will be a part of my conversation when I get into my more controversial uh, talks, is I don't like how distant the player is from the action, from the moment mm. to moment. You know, you make these broad sweeping motions, maybe very similar to idle games, where it's like you just kind of set the parameters and hope that all of your dudes do the right thing. And so I never feel the action. You want to be the dude, I guess. I want to be the yeah, dude. The dude. Yeah, the dude. I want to be the dude. I want to be the dude. All right. I put it down to feeling overwhelmed when I have to consider more than th more than one thing at the same time. Because <laughs> I'm fine with like stuff like turn-based strategy. I really like XCOM games. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm fine with like uh, the turn-based JRPG battling you get in games mm. like Persona. It's just when there's like three different fronts and I've got to be very quickly organizing all of my armies into three units to attack all three fronts. I'm like, I, I'm a very single-minded. I get very quickly overwhelmed trying to keep all this in my head. Like when I'm playing like a management game, the game goes like, oh, uh, there aren't enough houses for your residents. And I'm like, oh shit, I better tackle that. And like, then it's like, oh, we also don't have industrial... Just shut up, go away. I'm just taking care of this residential problem. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Yeah, so I guess that's I, I, why I prefer games where you play as one dude and you only yeah. have to worry about the perspective and the actions of that one dude. Yes. Yeah. Um, what if it was RTS? You set the parameters and all that, and then you press spacebar, and then boom, you are one of the dudes. Uh, see, I think I've played games that were along the sort of along those lines. I mean, you could argue FTL is like that. I, yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But again, um, that's manageable for me because there's only like a small number of uh, things right. in an enclosed space you need to worry about. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the exceptions you... to the RTS rule are usually FTL and Pikmin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, those are, those are uh, RTS in spirit, but have, you know, things that uh, differentiate them. Are those RTSs, or, or less the S stands for Shepherd, like real-time <laughs> shepherding? I like the, like Tiny Kin, Pikmin. That's fine. Like, all right, I come here now. You do that. Yeah, I think of Pikmin more as uh, an isometric combat game where your projectile is little red dudes. This is a gray area. That makes sense. But Jack wants wants to be immersed the whole time instead of like you just sound like middle management, do you? Just like all right, you go there, you go here, <laughs> and then I will. I don't. I do. I do not like middle management in general. <laughs> Correct. Well, I'd say more micromanagement than middle management. Ooh. It's like, I've, like, if I'm uh, part of an army, I'd like there to be a certain amount of, you know, independent spirit, middle of guys. <laughs> like, if you're, like, if you're being attacked by some dudes, maybe attack the dudes back instead of waiting mm. for me to tell you to attack the dudes back. Hmm. <laughs> and you don't, you don't like, like your war games, like Hell Let Loose, where you're just one bit of it all. I don't know. That's no, I guess I don't. Imagine. I've played like Battlefield multiplayer where you're like, you're yeah, like yeah. one dude and there's like 60 players and you just like try to achieve, vague, have, make a vague attempt at achieving <laughs> something in the middle of this chaotic brawl. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't really do, that doesn't, it doesn't really do much for me either. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's that it's that micromanagement aspect that Yatsu was talking about. Where there are games that are like you know, um, uh, what are the games? Uh, I'm I'm trying to I'm thinking like you know, like Prison Architect or um, mm. Life Sims, uh, like like kind of Life Sims where you you build up your uh, the Prison Architect people have a new one that they're working on. It's a ship uh, building game, and that, that I'm going to have to remember. Intriguing. Uh, uh, which is, it's a spaceship uh, building game where you get to like have a, a spaceship crew and you float around in space. And uh, I played a little bit of the early access. It's uh, an incredible amount of fun. I am stalling so that I can open up Steam. It's called The Last Starship. Uh, Ooh, well, and, that's a very uh, generic name that, that I'm instantly <laughs> going to forget. If I, see I do. Starship, I'll be very oh. mad. But that kind of base building strategy, like, oh, build up your X uh, number of platoons. Oh, thank you, Eric, for uh, bringing up the last starship for me. Um, uh, that sort of stuff where it's more that that overall management where I can just tell dudes to start doing something uh, while I work on something else. I'm OK with that kind of strategy. It's just the the real time uh, uh, micromanaging. I think yeah, so you put it really well there. Sure. Hmm. Nice, yeah. I'll, uh, I'm not, I'm neither for or against, <clears throat> it's, it's one of those I want to get, I want to understand, but RTS to me might as well be a piano because I've seen like 
professional starcrafters and the way that they're just with the mouse and it's all about your your what is it your wpm your words per minute and i was like <laughs> that's I the have, other thing I yeah little fingers <laughs> these days like, yeah yeah these things these days i tend to group rts with fighting games in that that their genres seem to have been mostly taken over by the sweaties these days <laughs> <laughs> sure, but it's about like the accessibility. To me, RTSs are the pianos of the genre, whereas fighting mm. games are more like the drums. And I did like the drums. I grew up on those. That's why I guess I was more attracted to those. But RTSs See, to I'm, me is like, you just can't... Piano and, piano and drums are kind of the same in that anyone can play them, but very few people can play them well. Sure, yeah. It's like I, I mean, can do then you got, in, what, would be the, what would be the equivalent of the guitar that actually takes some... Uh, uh, technical know-how to play it as well what if you not, don't have hands though <laughs> not not to bemoan one of our favorite series but the guitar is the souls like that's the that's the generic uh cool. thing that many Here's people Wonder can Wall. still play they, <laughs> <laughs> some people can just play power chords and but they can muddle through a song and some people really know how to how to go hard i like i just i like fighting games as the drums uh because uh that's how i play fighting games is just just yep. smacking, yeah. just smacking stuff. <laughs> See, this sort of ties into like one of my next points was that one thing that I know I'm uh, uh, in a minority on, it seems, is that I just don't get playing online multiplayer against or with people, like at all. And especially not in uh, RTS and fighting games and MOBAs and stuff, because it seems like if you don't go into that with a automatic degree of instance, natural knowledge and uh, experience, Everyone just takes the piss out of you, and maybe yeah. I'm maybe this is just my social awkwardness, but uh, I don't want to do that when I'm trying to have fun. No, you're right. That is, that's just too overwhelming for my poor nervous brain. Yeah, and I'm absolutely <laughs> right on that. To the point where um, I had to wean myself off of them. I played them for like ten years, mm -hmm. and I go, <clears throat> I've become very angry. I just at any disappointment anywhere in the world, and it's just too much. So I'm gonna wean off of those slowly. Uh, for, to defend them, though, I don't like team-oriented ones so much more as, like, me versus somebody else because <clears throat> there's only so much... You can only feel so smart against AI. Um, mm. like, like I, Yeah, I get that. And stuff like that, yeah. I just get really stressed out at the thought that I'm disappointing someone either by not helping enough or not being a challenging <laughs> enough foe. Oh, my God. I didn't even <laughs> think about that part. I could, I could get the first one, but, like, oh, I wasn't... It's, I'm sorry well, you I beat just, me so easily. Yeah. I just don't like other people. Well, they have, they have matchmaking now. Yeah, it's, they have other people. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't always the case. I remember I used to be really into TF2. I played it all the time. Yeah. I'm not even what? sure what happened. Well, I know why I stopped playing TF2. I was a medic main. And then they in introduced the first, like, character, like, update that included mm -hmm. the achievements and the uh, new weapons. And the first one was medic. Yeah. So I joined a, a random game, and, like, every fucking player was medic because they were trying to grind up the achievements. <laughs> So I stopped and basically never went back. Oh, oh, you're like the the individuality is gone. They took it I, from. I was a damn fine medic before they added all that bullshit. Oh, and being that. a medic is a is a or uh, and is now still as I jumped back in recently uh, is a rare thing because everyone else wants to be a scout or heavy. Uh, I just like being medic because it means someone else has to make the important decisions. You just point at whoever seems like they know what they're doing and. <laughs> And I'm help to keep them, up. Yeah. yeah. You say that, God. I, I played a, a little pro Overwatch for a bit, and I, as a healer, you if you just sit there and you just heal a little bit, it's whatever. But you'll get yelled at for like you have to call the next point. You're behind us all. You can see everything. You're the fucking general. I was like, no, I just want to <laughs> heal. It's like here, are you okay? All right, like, let's, we can stay here. Is everyone fine? Juice box, okay. Juice yeah. box, juice box. That's um, yeah. I, I always yeah. preferred medic or engineer main for TF2. Same with Overwatch. I I was always a mercy. Uh, I was always a healer class, uh, as I enjoy support more. But like to me, the the online experience is that is that um, the oh f fuck I always forget the name of it. You know the story that ha just happens, not that's intended in a game. Emergent gameplay. Thank you. I love that as well. Right, and and you know just like the the tiny little moments that can happen when you are all speaking the same language, whether it be in a in an Overwatch or TF2 or in any online game where we all know the language of this game and we know that like. We all know the things that are supposed to happen, and so when they don't happen, we can all enjoy the same in-joke together, which to me is, is a lovely experience.
Yeah, I remember feeling like part of the community. If you look at all the like millions of weird source filmmaker Team Fortress Two movies on YouTube, <laughs> right? Oh, did you did you see Emesis Blue, Jack? I'm sorry, Emesis Blue. Em Emesis Blue. It was like a video that went out on a source filmmaker uh, YouTube channel. It's like a two hour long, incredibly gripping horror noir that's incredibly well made. Jeez, I'm I'm seeing I, I'm seeing it now, and I will uh, watch it later. This this looks amazing. Yeah, because I I like put it on idly one morning because I like source filmmaker movies. Most of them uh -huh. are just silly humor, but you know I like that sort of thing. Yeah. But I just put I put this on like uh, while I was working in the background, and I didn't get any work done that morning because like <laughs> I'd let things roll out, and my just eyes were fixed to it for the entire length. That is quite a compliment. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Stuff. So we've got what are the ones we've mentioned so far? We've got the idle uh, games, I think. Idle games, RTS, fighting games, multiplayer games generally. Play. Did we say fully fighting games? Who, who doesn't? Well, get I, them? I just well, I just said you know fighting games as part of the RTS umbrella uh, thing that it's taken over by the sweaties, and if you try to play them online, you get instantly mulched. I, th I think like any sort of any sort of competitive game, the the issue that you will run into, and whether we are talking, you know, uh, Tekken to Mario Kart, is the skill gaps are usually ridiculous. You know, like if everyone's at the same general level, you can usually have fun. But if one person, and I'm speaking like myself, I, I got very good at Mario Kart. I got very good at uh, Smash Brothers to the point in which. No one wanted to play with me, and I couldn't have fun playing with anyone else. I had so. that problem with Words with Friends. <laughs> that's that's why I'm okay. I used to be very, like, get good. I would get good at it all, but it's just that where I went. You know, if I didn't get good, I would enjoy this more, mm -hmm. I suppose. Sure. It's like robo-tripping. I don't know. I'm just, like, making sure that you never improve. That's why I, I can't get into Rocket League, because I know... That game doesn't open up until you improve. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to do that to myself. What have we got here, though? Rocket League I... is so much very fun, though. Like, I'll it's... throw one in. I'll save us. I got another softball, but that's for later. Actually, no. I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Because they are constantly on Steam, and they are constantly top sellers. Sex games. <laughs> you know, I was about to say that for a joke. You're talking about sex games, aren't you? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah, tons come out because like Steam favors the popular, uh, the Steam algorithm favors whatever's popular, and uh, people like their sex games. I mean, yeah, I don't, I didn't really expect to have to explain this to someone, but yeah, people like porn. Tell me where babies come from. Yes. <laughs> Why? What don't you get, Frost? Like where? It's like the, the story. Yeah, good luck also. finding footage for this one, Eric. <laughs> Eric, yeah. do not try to yeah, find right. Just leave it on Rocket League for a while there. Uh, yeah, no, it is. It's not a. Uh, what is it? Like, I, I, I get it. I get it. It's just. I, I suppose since since uh, Pornhub became prominent, I never went to magazines, so to speak. You're, as, you're asking why people would play a porn game where you have to like complete challenges and go through story to get to the porn why when they could they just, just so... look at the porn on Pornhub. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like. The in in movies, the the boner comedy no longer exists because uh, access to pornography is so easy. We no longer need to see boobs in our comedy movies. But what if it's the fact that it's easy to get that turns you off? What if like <laughs> you're more turned on by an experience you have to work for, like so mm. you can get the sort of simulated conquest of seduction? I'm married. <laughs> 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 oh my uh, I, I i see what you mean sure <clears throat> it's also um falls on the I've, I've i have liked porn games in the past porn games have done it for sure, me in the past sure. and i'm giving you my perspective no no I, I, I will never as as i take it i will never judge anyone's taste but mm -hmm. i'm free to just go i don't get it but i support you I and mean, i'm i'm just like just it's that grandpa you know, I'm slightly ashamed that I'm pretty sure I know what that game is that Eric's showing. <laughs> I think I think he's got Catherine up. Am I wrong? People are saying Catherine, so I can yeah. only assume it. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's Catherine, and I'm slightly mm -hmm. ashamed that I, that I could recognize it. But, but what I'm getting at, too, is like, are they, are they good games? Sex Away, are they good games? Well, they're good because they get you off. That's their, oh, that's I'm the their intended purpose, and they achieve it, therefore they must be good. Am I the idle clicker now, then? <laughs> are you saying are they fun games to play like let's say like like super super giant games right where it's like 
very nar narrative intensive, but the game itself might be a little, you know, basic at times, perhaps. So do, do those games have cool moment-to-moment -moment core gameplay loops? Well, no. <laughs> well, do they have like a Tetris, but it's Rule Thirty Four Tetris. Like... Well, most of the porn games I've played weren't that involved gameplay wise. Um, I okay. guess I'm more of a you know a hentai visual novel sort of guy. Right, right, right. Sure. You just sort of you just sort of skip through the text, like click on the thing it says to click, and then you get to see boobs. Sure. I, yeah. I think the most in the most in depth porn game of those I ever played was sort of like had a full on persona style life sim attached to it. So you had to choose what uh, activities to do each day, and that would change what girls you spent the most time with and who you'd eventually oh, seduce. Yeah, see, that that's what I was wondering because um, a lot of the times these can just be visual novels, and uh, yeah, I sure. Mean, I, the sex or not, I, visual novels are a rough one for me too. Where I was like, I kind of would have preferred to read this, like physically. <laughs> So. You don't you don't like uh, the, the the sight of uh, well I'm not even going to finish that sentence. Probably smart. Probably smart. That's for the best. Yeah. I, I, th I, I, it, was like... going to, it was going to a sentence that started with the word schoolgirls, and I didn't like anything that came no, after that. No. We appreciate that. Yeah. I think like in general, yeah, like yeah, people like boobs. Uh, people want to see boobs in sure. you know as much oh. as possible. Uh, still, the largest demographic of people who play video games are young men. Yeah, a lot of straight young men want to see boobs. That's great. I I can empathize with Yahtzee's half joking point that you know working for boobs might be part of the thing. Uh, you know, as I'm going through Baldur's Gate three, like you know the the rom romancing someone to get to boobs. Oh, that that does make boobs even you know gif Yankee boobs uh, definitely yeah, more yeah. worth it. yeah. Sure. Relatedly, the whole like Rule Thirty Four thing. People seek out porn of characters they know because sure. um, they have like associations with that character that the porn enhances in some way, mm, or that I... enhances the porn. That, that's <laughs> how you can actually genuinely um, oh. calculate how popular a game is and lo like locked into the mainstream. If there's porn of it, oh. if, if there's no porn of your game, it's just a flash in the pan. That's 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 it. Well, I'll have to keep an eye out when Starstruck Vagabond comes out. Oh, boy. <laughs> See what sort of uh, waifu fantasies I'm able to inspire. Oh, big, big ones there. Oh, oh, well, fingers crossed for you, Yats. Shall we move on? I fingers am ready crossed, to move on. Fingers <laughs> crossed and fists blurred. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, here's, here's my, here's my uh, hotter take. My okay. hotter take of games that, uh, in general, I do not like. Your action RPGs, your Diablo likes, your uh -huh. one, once again camera far away, uh, murder a bunch of people, pick your looter shooters or, or looter slashers, however you call them. Not uh, a fan of know. this sound. <laughs> click, 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 click. Oh, now I have hot bar buttons. Click, 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 click. Oh, bar. see, I, I do two. one button builds where it's like, it <laughs> press that and he spins and that's it. <laughs> your Wolfsons, your any anything in that genre, your you know a lot of uh, MMOs have that perspective, and I do not feel you know I, for action games specifically. I want to feel like I am doing a thing. I want to feel like oh, I'm swinging a sword. You, you don't like isometrics, is what you're telling me. It's the camera yeah. angle. Uh, some of that, but even like, you know, when you play Diablo, it's it's very it's very click and then you swing and click and then you swing and I don't okay. feel I, powerful. I you you feel, okay, you okay, but how's that different to press a button and swing your sword and fire a gun in like a third person <laughs> action adventure game? Like Dark right? like Souls, for example. It is it literally just a camera thing? It, you want to be up some close to some people in the action? Might just be, uh... It might be a camera thing. In when when I play uh, when I play Baldur's Gate three, which you know you can have the camera in many different uh, places, I always zoom in as much as possible because I want to be as close to the action as possible. So they, it, maybe enough. it is just a camera thing. Yeah, I see where you're coming from because when I play <clears throat> Diablo and those isometrics, because I do, because they're very similar to idle game incremental ups and whatnot. <laughs> um, I don't even know where the character went. I just see a big blur of things. So. <laughs> right. That's I'm with you as well. That I don't feel immersed, but I'm not there for that in that instance. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm, I'll just play them loot. Yeah, I was going to ask, I how guess, do you feel about like Borderlands? Because you said looter shooter. Uh, well, and I th yeah, looter shooter was the incorrect term, but it, that style of game in which uh, like maybe that part of my brain is broken. That where you see like the big loot drop and you just pick up all the loot. I hate all of that uh, because uh, so much of it is so useless. 
Mm. Yeah, I hate a game where I have to pause every now and again to go through my inventory and clear out everything that hasn't got numbers higher than my current numbers. Right. Oh. It just feels really like breaking up the pace. And mm -hmm. no, intellectually, I understand that uh, alternating between, you know, high octane action and uh, rest periods is like the best way to parcel out the fun in a game. Somehow that particular flavor of it doesn't float me boat. Yeah. I mean, it was the very thing that. Um, Progress Quest was riffing off way back in the day. Go to the dungeon, collect all the stuff, go back to the town, sell all the stuff. It's part of the the cycle yes. of the so machine. You just, see, you just see the bars go up. <clears throat> what about you, though, Yats? Isometric camera to make you feel like well, you're there? Well, my, well I would uh, raise the subject of Hades and how Jack feels about playing Hades, which is an I isometric game. I dislike Hades in general. Well, you don't like you it play Bastion? because of that? I did not play Bastion, no. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I like many, many uh, a rogue, uh, a rogue like, uh, and I like many uh, an action game. And Hades didn't click for me. Um, I think uh, on a rogue like, uh, you know, uh, not necessarily uh, related to the camera. Uh, Hades didn't work for me just because I didn't feel like my builds were uh, substantially different from run to run. I wasn't ah, getting, I get you, a yeah. different, you know, like the the upgrades were very incremental. I didn't feel like I was having that like wildly different journey run to run. So it didn't click for me, rogue like wise. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The idea. This is. <clears throat> I'd almost say this is closer to a pet peeve of just um, builds that don't ever differentiate from themselves. Right? Yeah, but, I mean, the Binding oh, of Isaac was showing how it was done with roguelikes yeah, like years and years, years ago. Just yeah. make every every run feel different depending on what combination of shit you collect on the way. Absolutely, but even something like Spelunky, who has a, a very small uh, cachet of items, you could have incredibly different runs based off of just one or two items. Uh, hmm. So, but so I don't necessarily think that the camera angle difference of uh, yeah. Hades is what did that for me. But I'm, right, I'm trying yeah. to think of an example of a game that has that isometric view that I do enjoy. Baldur's Gate 3. But, but well, I zoom he, in. Yeah, he says zoomed in. And you know, oh, like your, your XCOMs, while I enjoy XCOMs, uh, they have those kill cams that really sink it in for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially if, especially if it's like a 60% chance to hit and you've got your little mm -hmm. fingers crossed. And then and you, you get kids. to see your character yeah. actually do a thing. Ooh, baby. <laughs> that's interesting. Play, player and player character connection. That's, that's a very important thing for you. Yeah, um, I, I mean, think so. I was, that's made me, because I was thinking like, um, uh, well, uh, if you don't like isometric, you probably wouldn't like board games either because uh, it feels like you're out of it and just looking down on it from afar. That, <laughs> but that I made me like but that made me remember another thing I don't get, and that's video game card games. I, I love that video. Because surely know. card games were originally created because we didn't have TVs on which to display crazy dragon fights. <laughs> we just had to look at two pictures of crazy dragons and have to make up the crazy dragon fight in our heads. But now we can make a crazy dragon fight on our TVs, and we're using all the technology that could be creating a crazy dragon fight to just simulate the fucking cards. I mean, am I on crazy pills? Um, is it? I know exactly what you mean. Like, a thousand percent there. Um, and it's especially if it's like a card game that the deck is tiny and there's not a lot of variety. Because for Slay the Spire, it works almost like in a in, in almost like a text based adventure card game where it would just yeah, be like, all right, kinda. here's what I'm doing. And the, if you're gonna have cards, fine, make up with it with a vast assortment of them instead of just like, all right, here comes the like two dragons here. That now I'm 100 percent with you there. If there's not a lot of variety in a card game, I'm like, what is that? Why am I? Why am I here? I could play Dragon's Dogma. Instead of like, oh, the orc. Oh, you climbed on the orc, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, I, I, I used my climb on the orc card. Yeah. But I, I do enjoy um, cards as a mechanic. Uh, like Neon White, the... the um, it was Esposito, uh, Esposito who the, said he yeah, wanted... Yeah, the fact that they were cards in that game were, was almost completely superficial there, wasn't it? He said, they might he as said well it have was just a been floating guns. Because people would, if they were guns that they had, they looked at them as guns. Like, just straight up and were more interested in shooting. Whereas, as cards, this makes you go, puzzle, strategy. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah it was a old design doc or something of his. Well, I was like, that's, that is a neat way of shifting their perspective. 
That's interesting. I can see the logic that he's working yeah. off there because it is more a puzzle game than a than an action shooter. Yeah, because like imagine another game where you have three submachine guns. Well, you're gonna have one in your hand and the other two just like out of view. Whereas like one, you yeah. three machine gun. One, in, one like, in one in one hand, one in the other hand, the other strapped to your your bell end. Yeah, shooting <laughs> with your pee pee. <laughs> so I, I do like card mechanics. Um, not a big fan of, like you said, not a lot of variety, and it's just how I went with the story uh, of it all. Just, I think, yeah. like the 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 reason that card game video games are are such a, a strong thing right now is because of the the antagonist, right? Like we can play card games at home, you versus me, but uh, playing a single player card game at home is significantly more difficult. So we have that art, we have that uh, artificial intelligence villain to fight right. against, right? Right. Um, I, yeah. I say that just loving Slay the Spire. So <laughs> sure. See, so that, that's a, Slay the Spire is so odd to me because it feels like a rogue in that like the runs can feel vastly different depending on the builds that you fashion. Well it is uh, a rogue like yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. well not it's, not the traditional uh, term but yeah just how it goes there. Just uh, a game. Okay. Did we have oh. anything else before we go to super chats? Um, <laughs> I'll do my quick fire offs here. Okay. And that'll be. This isn't. <laughs> I don't get them. It's more. I don't get people who have more than one of these, and that's MMORPGs, right? I feel like one will set you for life. Uh, what else I get? <laughs> uh, people who buy every installment of like a sports game. Uh, I'll like uh, yeah. a five year gap, but every yeah, year. Yeah, but they, they, those aren't, you know, standard core gamers. Those are people who are more into the sport than they are into video games. Mm -hmm. And they're just supporting their interest. I don't know, bro. Gamer's a gamer. That's how I see it. And uh, I found a. Part on, of on these. On the subject of MMORPGs, I found a, a YouTuber recently who I very much enjoy, uh, Josh Strife Hayes, who oh, uh, yes. reviews. I've seen a few of those. Yeah, he re he reviews a bunch of uh, MMORPGs. He he's going into more retro games now. A lovely, lovely YouTuber. I I really enjoy watching his kind of deep dives into all of these MMOs, uh, which is a genre that I do not care for. You know, far away, uh, clicking. You know, action RPG clicky, um, but. Um, the the fascinating thing about about him is you know he'll like play a game and oh like you can see here this is really good but if you look at this game it's really bad and to me they look exactly the same and yeah. <laughs> and so I, it, like someone tasting French wine eh was right. like, oh, yeah. notes of like ham and cheese in this one <laughs> for me the comparison is Olympic diving judges. <laughs> like I'll watch that's the Olympic diver who'll do like a triple somersault and like land in the water perfectly and they'll go, mm -hmm. Oh, he'll be happy with that. And then I'll see the next person come out do precisely the same thing <laughs> with precisely the same landing and the judge will go, Oh, that's let the side down, hasn't it? <laughs> oh dear. He he won't be showing his face at the Olympic fuck dungeon tonight, will he? <laughs> It's it's amazing to me how like if you are so dialed into a specific genre, you can pick up those minutiae. Uh, and I, I enjoy the content overall. But yes, uh, when you are not well versed, when you don't know the language of a, of a genre, it's it's all it's all triple backflips to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely love it. And so that was my yeah, MMORPGs, the sports games. I even uh I'll apply the same thing for ubisoft for like every once in three years when your game goes on sale for five bucks i'll have a look because mm. uh, it wasn't changing up enough and then my last one which would be more the guilty pleasures was just the vampire survivors bullet heavens where the whole point is to just get super overpowered and i think that's uh that's me acting out because a lot too many games are so sensible you know no power fantasy just you got power not a fantasy i was like let me be god every now and then <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can super chat them up. I'm sure Chad's got plenty of my 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 yeah. hot take with Vampire Survivors or Bullet Heavens in general. Uh, Vampire Survivors specifically because that's the only one I've played. I don't think it is mechanically a good game. It's probably not. The, um... And and I don't think that's the point. I think the point is like you said, we want spectacle, we want you know super overpoweredness. But I just can't, I can't justify playing it. Because at the end of the day, there's almost nothing I can do to play better. Yeah, I'll uh, play something like that. 
people and listening to podcasts if I'm in a particularly bored mood and don't particularly want to do anything more than zone out for a while. That's why I think the better the better one, even though like I love them for just bringing some popularity to it, is Brotato because it is like um, uh, Diablo ish. It's the characters drop more than like the one item you get when you level up. Sure, and, and you're like buying constantly builds and shaping that. It's very very involved. More math. Yeah, Eric's got it right there. Thank uh, you, but no, I think you're right because Ponko was saying I wasn't really designing a game, so to speak, more like a lottery machine. Right. Like, oh. hmm. And so, like, for what it is, for what it intends to be, I think it nails it. But that's uh, Vampire Survivors is the epitome of the game where instead of playing that, I would much rather just zone out. Like, literally, I will look at the ceiling and zone out for an hour. <laughs> Lovely. To me, it's like uh, get, standing on your porch and watching a storm roll in because by the end, all you hear is. <laughs> it's, Very it's nice. Like, it's like, I could have just taken a shower, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> super chats. <laughs> All right, let's move. Let's start. Uh, I've only got the super chats. If uh, I miss a member chat, be sure to bite my head off. All right, more money. But let we'll... me change my tabs here, and I will. I will uh, keep track of member chats. Absolutely. Okay, and we are starting with Mark Davis, who gives one ninety nine British pounds, and says, "Jack, please say something nice in Toasty's voice." Now, how how much of a dickhead am I going to be? Should I just say something nice? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'll say something actually nice. Yahtzee, you smell terrific today. <laughs> That's not like toasty voice, though, is it? That's um, whoever it was who voiced the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland voice. I mean, it's all, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh I want to say Errol Flynn, but that's not true. Ed Wynn. Oh, yeah. Ed it's, Wynn, yeah. It's all Ed Wynn. That's toasty. <laughs> Edward Flynn. Errol Flynn Errol is the Flynn, swashbuckling yeah. uh, yes. actor. Ed Wynn is the one who voiced the Mad Hatter in Snagglepuss, which is what toasty is. <laughs> I love him. Have you ever heard the story of Errol Flynn's life? No. Like, there's this podcast I listen to called The Dollop that does, uh, like, American history, and they do an episode on Errol Flynn, and his, his life was nuts. Yeah. Didn't he, like, get shipwrecked? He was in, it was insane. He was like um, he was Australian, and uh, he pretended to be Irish once he was a film actor. <laughs> and he had like he used to have like a career biting the testicles off of sheep. Wow! <laughs> and he went from that uh, to Hollywood, and he had like the worst divorce like settlement in history. Oh, sure. Um, like if like like the divorce settlement was that if uh, he had to pay his ex wife alimony. And if his income went up, the alimony went up, but the alimony never went down again. Oh. Even if his income went down again. <laughs> That's worse than what Nintendo wow. gave that one guy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm, amazing. Errol Flynn, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy life. Look it up. Um, Pure Pyro gives two euros and says, Have Frost and Yahtzee played Sir You Are Being Hunted? I never got around to that one, actually, since you ask. Oh, you Are Being Hunted. What is that one? It's an interesting game. Yeah. It's, oh uh, yes, it's like sandboxy kind of thing. Well, yes. sandboxy, survival horror-y, very fun, uh, good, good atmosphere. It it suffers uh, from, yeah. So you talk about this a lot. Is uh, is too much uh, a, a video game giving the players too much control over the difficulty, as if they didn't have uh, an intended right. play style. Yeah, uh, you you can mess with all sorts of difficulty sliders across across a spectrum of ranges uh, to the point where it's overwhelming. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. It shouldn't be the player's responsibility to figure out how to balance your fucking game. Right, uh, but uh, you know, it's it's a fun a fun little uh, first person uh, survival horror. All right, yeah. and uh, real quick, Nemesis, welcome to the Green Gang. Started us off. All right then. B.S. Marsh gives five dollars and says donation for the Marty Ransom Fund. <laughs> Get our yeah, but we don't. Yeah, what is he doing today? Him? Whatever, uh, whatever suits him. You know, it's like back in the old days when they'd say she's got lady things. Oh, and okay. He he's, it. he's powdering he's got, his nose. He's yeah. got Marty things. Got Marty wink, things. wink. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Theo gives five dollars and says I enjoy arcade mill sim like Insurgency, but I just don't get full on mill sim like Armor Three. Seems like a lot of work for the fantasy. Maybe I'm not an RP guy. See, Milsim meaning military simulator. Thank you. So games like Armor 3, I group with like the traditional sense of dad games. 
like uh, <laughs> Euro Truck Simulator and Train Simulator, because those are games specifically designed for people who used to be in that specific job and really miss it. Dads, in other words, retired dads. Yeah. And like, I, that's, like War Thunder, that's, right? Yeah, that's what I think of Armor Three. It's a game for retired soldiers who uh, need something to stave off the PTSD. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it works. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Hjort87 gives 50 Danish kroner, says re-idle games. In uni, I played a ton of Mountain Blade while listening to the radio. Civ with future armor in the background is also good. Can't do horror. Well, no. If you're being distracted by a podcast playing a horror game, then you miss out on all the horror stuff, don't you? But why not just watch Futurama? <laughs> Like, that's a fine quality show. Just watch it. Well, maybe they're like me and they can't just watch something anymore. They've got to be like playing on their phone, like playing Bejeweled on their phone while they're watching it as I, well. I do not have the brain power to split my attention like that. I do well, almost uh, too much. Like, you said you're a one track mind. Yeah, so yeah, I've got like nine fast lanes. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got to do a bunch of things. I've, I've taken up meditation to sort of get one longer road running. Mm. Um, but I'm, mm. I was, that was another one of my, this, these games, the Civ type games, they're always the most wishless of demos during Next Fest. And I'm like, one ought to be enough to keep you going. To me, it's very much like MMORPGs where I was like, okay, the feel's about the same. But they're, they're always the most popular. I don't get it, but love it. Love to see it. Good. Yeah, I started playing um, Universim the other day because uh, Nick recommended it and it seems to be going down rather well. Now it's out on Steam. And again, I'm like a one-track mind and I like uh, something to be goal-oriented. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, you've got some dudes. What? Look at them go. Look at them go building houses and shit. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I'm like, well, are we supposed to be waiting to defend against Godzilla or something? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, just depends on who you are. Like there's uh the, the the spiffing Brit, and I forgot his name. They like breaking those kinds of games, and be, and just. I think I know who you mean. I've yeah, seen a lot of just messing with it, and I was like, it's it's fun to watch someone who's good at them, you know. Yeah. So. Ambiguous amphibian is that who you're thinking of? No. What's I've it? seen a lot of his videos. He does things like, um, can we play The Sims where we've only got like one tile of space to work with? And uh, we can only unlock another tile of space for every hundred dollars we earn. And by the way, no matter what the genre, I will always watch those videos. I will always watch oh, yeah. someone who's very good at something completely break it, even if I don't know the game yeah. or genre very well. Oh yeah, there's a lot yeah. of Project Zomboid stuff as well. Well, uh, oh no, his name was Let's Game It Out. He, I found him because a lot of developers were saying this guy is like the most chaotic QA I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Like, All right. Oh, good. Hmm, all right. Uh, anyway. Gelden Yelch, thanks for the uh, two uh, two month member of the tip jar. We appreciate that support. Oh, nice. Uh, Nick Warden gives five dollars and says, "I'm sitting here with antimatter dimensions in one tab and a spreadsheet in the other. Still can't explain it." Yeah, that's like uh, rocket scientists for uh, yeah. It's an idle game for essentially like rocket scientists. I would say. <laughs> yeah, if you if you if you're really into being in academia, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe if maybe they've got like a really asshole boss that everything they play has to look like work. Remember the old like boss key <laughs> thing Sierra Adventure games used to have, oh, where you'd okay. smash a key and a fucking spreadsheet would fill the screen. Ooh, yeah, I like it. That like are it. just people who um, maybe in the post dad being like, okay, that's a job they used to do. Maybe that job was like oh, I used to be a maths professor, and he yeah. still got me. Yeah. Well, I well, I can't imagine myself playing game review simulators after i retire <laughs> or, or like game dev tycoon something like that yeah well it's not it doesn't feel like actual game dev does it i mean the satisfaction i get from game dev is like building things in mm. programming and seeing it all work yeah, yeah. I, I, it might just depend on the application there's a, a hacking mmo that came out where you yeah you hack each other and it was yeah. um, pirate software tested it out, and he's a black hat or whatever. He used to do that for the government, and he's like, "Oh man, this is actually pretty like intuitive." And he was there for hours just hacking away. Uh, and I'm like, sure, hmm. po post dad game for sure. There you go. Uh, Fungus finding is two dollars and says roses smell good, and you could make tea from the hips. Thanks for that little household tip, Fungus Finder, who then gives us another two dollars to say nothing. 
You mm. just decided to confuse us all today. Thank you, you fine. see uh, anything, but. <laughs> and then Hjorth87 comes back with 20 Danish kroner and says, maybe my examples weren't really idle games. He was mm. talking about Mountain Blade and Civ earlier. Those are like the grand strategy type games, aren't they? Yeah. Civ is. Yeah. I, I don't well, know much about Mountain Blade. I think that's a game where you mount and blade. Oh. Where you mount things and then blade them while mounted. Hell yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Bucket List gives $5 and says, When I was a younger, I played and enjoyed everything. Mm. I think age also affects our understanding. I can't do multiplayer anymore. We're getting old, fellas. <laughs> uh, I, 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 hang up, I hung up the golden joysticks long, long ago. Jack, we should get like the second win team together and we should just play team fortress 2 one of these days Hell you missed that day yes. we did that remember our glory days i love team oh, fortress 2 uh I, I mean obviously yeah you get older reflexes get slower that's that's a part of life you get older also uh y- you have other shit to do like you just can't <laughs> i i cannot uh give the time to a video game that i once was able to even though i do it as part of my job <laughs> so yeah yeah old uh dr theo gives five dollars and says i hate that i can't enjoy new vegas i'm a zoomer and it has a, the case of the old so it makes it feel like i'm fighting the engine instead of playing that's a very fair criticism new uh, vegas for all of the wonderful things that are in new vegas it is janky as hell yeah that's just bethesda face isn't it yeah yeah i still have i still have troubles with that i trouble with it in starfield as well Yep. So uh, that's okay, Dr. Theo. I, I mean, in a perfect world, we could get a, a nice remaster of that to make it, you know, run properly, maybe look a little better. It's, it's, it's age is showing. That's fair. Uh, Numb face clown. Welcome to the green gang. We appreciate that support. Nice. Uh, Fox D gives $5 and says, I have 2000 hours in American truck simulator and a chronic shortage of audible credits. These are related. <laughs> Uh, good i mean if if you like it that's great that's great yeah yeah <laughs> check out my next audio book that's coming out pretty soon really oh. that's what's that called it's called we'll leave the galaxy for good and it's the third and final chapter in the jacques mccune trilogy what there you go. Yeah. so what you're saying credit. is if i wanted to catch up on the entire trilogy before it came out i could do so right now via audible.com that would certainly be a smart thing to do in preparation for that i think we're looking at i think april was looking at the release date but uh, you know subject to updates Uh, uh dr theo gives two dollars and says beating players is more satisfying than bots yeah i get that but as i say multiplayer's multiplayer liking people are so sweaty these days yeah like a new multiplayer game comes out and there's already people who've like spent the last 24 hours becoming the best in the world <laughs> i think like though that that high is worth it like that high when you are a sniper in tf2 and you get that real good headshot on a scout that high is worth like 20 minutes of crap <laughs> that's a human you just shit on yeah this is mm-hmm. worth it you and know. you know you lined it up just right. Oh, I bet he's going to jump right here. Cook. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, when you predicted it, it's, I'm in your head. That's even, it's more drawn out because I gave up on like on competitive ones. I'll switch to like online well, I suppose card games. Na- I now you mentioned it, I got weirdly into playing Babel Royale because See? that was a game that I actually uh, didn't have to put work into kicking absolute ass in. Mm-hmm. And I'd be playing that on stream and I'd be getting stream sniped and I'd just take down everyone who tried to stream snipe me because I was that good. What the hell? You could have had a different career, you know that? <laughs> Professional Scrabble player. There you go. Professional oh. uh, hostile Scrabble player. Extreme oh Scrabble player. I think yeah, they, a... those exist. Professional Scrabble players do exist. I'm pretty mm. sure they do, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> One way. Uh, Diane had... Spencer. Yes. Gives 20 British pounds. Says, nice to see Jack again. More toffee cam, please. Well, I could wake him up, you heartless monster. Don't you, don't if you, you want, do that. If you want to see him that bad. Don't there, you look. dare. Oh, the, oh, yeah, there, oh. there he is. That's a good dad. Moving the cam. <laughs> Move the cam instead of the dog. There you go. 
<laughs> Thank he's you. A, yeah. He's a sleepy pup as ever. Uh, Blue McDee's nuts gives two dollars and says, "Good eye, Wild Frost. You don't know Jack and Yahtzee." Ah, I see, because all three of those are games. You see. Oh, oh, I didn't get it at first. I didn't either. And now I do. <laughs> and then Meister Kleister Heister gives five euros and says, Yats, how did your perspective on tabletop games change before and after Adventure is Nigh? Not much. I mean, I knew I was kind of keen on playing D&D again. That's why I said, hey, I'd be keen to play D&D again when it came up. Mm-hmm. I used to play it when I was a kid and haven't had the chance of that sort of, you know, fun social role playing in a while. Mm-hmm. There you go. I, I, you know, tabletop role playing, tabletop games generally, like they serve a different niche to video games, I think, because they're, really? they're, they're, they're a social lubricant. Unlike like couch co op stuff, you actually have to sit around a table and all look at each other when you're playing tabletop games. What's the opposite yeah. of, of lubricant? The greaser. The greaser. <laughs> yes. makes it more abrasive and less smooth uh, it makes it more abrasive when you are playing a game with more without a game master like uh, as someone who has many many a board game night there are many games that are very rules focused so that you can't have bits and funny gags in between it's too focused on the rules that is a social degreaser no fun uh, fair enough. a pandemic legacy edition will ruin friendships. You just will not see people after you play a couple rounds of that. So, Okay. Yeah, I haven't played board games in ages. I um, no. uh, should probably do it when we're all in uh, the YouTube Airbnb later I'll this year. I'll bring some. But we have some nice ones, not like, you know, here, let's play Honey, I Want a Divorce. And... No, no, I have, <laughs> I have some very lovely... Low stakes, uh, more fun uh, board games that I will bring. I've got Arkham Horror at home. That's like um, a, that's a co-op board game. Oh. So all the players work together against the Lovecraftian horror. That's fun. And usually fail. Oh. <laughs> uh, where was he? Uh, Odd Cam gives two dollars and says, "Isn't life just one big sex game?" If that's the way you want to look at it, Odd Cam. Some, some of us are, have different motives. Some people are trying to get plat in that. Called well, the, you could argue uh, these. Catchers. One could argue the central motive that uh, connects all life is the desire to reproduce. Yeah. I mean, so. uh, I've had a couple of reproductions, and uh, yeah, not too, not that bothered about sex anymore, to be honest with you. <laughs> Wow, that's when the depression kicks in. <laughs> now I just want to mend things with a screwdriver because I'm a dad. Look at this guy. I want to fix everything. My house, my relationship with my father. Everything. We're going to get you with like, the best wrench set, Yahtzee. It's going to be great. Oh, Christ. Are you a handy guy like that? Like you got Not a really. shed of tools? You got a shed? I mean, um, I've occasionally been called upon to uh, unblock the bathroom sink. Take, uh, oh, by taking apart all the pipes underneath and uh, put, putting on some hard-wearing gloves and getting a big wrench out. Ooh. Because it's, because, you know, I know how to do it and it's easier than calling a plumber out. There you go. There you go. You just have to, you know, clear out all the horrible snot every few months from the pipes. Ooh. Little little vinegar and bike baking soda that can be helpful before yeah. it helps clear out some of the bigger ones. Yeah. But if you can access the pipes, just uh, take them out and just wash them. Yeah, uh, I always call someone that way. I have someone to blame because if it was me, it's like <laughs> oh, I'm not getting the, the deposit back. So. <laughs> ah, fair. Uh, fair. Peter fair. Park Peter Parker SL gives ten dollars and says, "Loved your latest semi emblematic Yahtzee. How do you feel about moral plot twists in RPG?" I know I was emotionally exhausted by the end of games like Witcher 3. I don't, I'm not sure what you mean when you say moral plot twists, Peter Parker, SL. I like but yeah, my, last, my last semi emblematic was about uh, plot twists and how to make them work in games. Hmm. I think they um, mean more so just moral dilemmas. Do you think? So, like, well, more, that's more that's choices. Witcher 3 is. Witcher 3 is just one guy being as neutral as he can be, and it's just like, this is good but bad, and this is bad but good. 
<laughs> right. Right. I, I suppose like Witcher 3 does like ask you to pick sides at certain points and, you know, like uh, slaps you on the hand when you say, I don't want to pick a side. Uh, so, yeah. That's, oh, my, that's my Geralt here's impression. Here's a good moral twist. I, I heard this on War Thunder, where being good, like the way we describe good, is bad. You know, you have to be a capitalist, fascist dickhead, <laughs> and that's how you get ahead. So the, the moral twist then would be that being good makes the game harder. Mm. So. Yeah, that's what the old, uh, the old uh, do good versus do bad moral dilemma of games like Infamous never really got, mm. is that the whole point is that doing good has to be harder than doing evil. Evil has to be the, like, the easier option that, uh, uh, that gets you your goals faster, but fucks over a load of people on the way. Mm. You have mm. to be able, you have to be, that's what you have to confront about yourself. Are we willing to put others before ourselves? In a game? No. So like I guess dungeon, like, dungeon is grind them. In, in, is in moral plot twist would be like you make a decision and then you discover later that that decision had disastrous oh. consequences. Oh. That would be a moral plot twist. Spend or would that just be yeah. a plot twist? I think that's a... Yeah, just seems, yeah, just seems like a plot twist to me. Maybe yeah. there's like... Maybe a plot twist is just the larger umbrella <laughs> and moral <laughs> is just a subset of that. There we go. But anyway... Sebastian Mikulek gives two dollars and says Huni Pop is a legitimately fun match three. That's porn. See, that's well, what I was asking. Like, that's always a like. Is there... You know, there's, there were certain people like trying to nag me to review that for ages, who've now finally given up, thankfully. But it's oh, just but, a match uh, three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do well, like a match three. Yeah. I suppose. I've, I just, you know, the mood when when I'm in the mood to play Bejeweled on my phone, there's not usually much crossover. With the times when I'm in the mood for a wank. Yeah, but it's more point. fun to play a match three that you, you can't have the audio on, you know? So, it's naughty. <laughs> anyway, uh, John uh. Connor gives two Canadian dollars and says, Ideal, idle, idle games keep both hands busy. See that, you know, oh, that comes down to flavors because there's some people that want a nice horizontal spread. So it's like, okay, I'm going to do this little thing. And then the, the, it goes on a little kind of timer thing. And then mathematically, I should optimize over here and then optimize this. And then I've made a route that makes me go here, 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 then here, and then here, 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 then here. I was like, that's I, too I much. I think he might have been making a masturbation joke. <laughs> we were talking about Honey Pop, weren't we? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, uh, you know, I, that. As this, as they say, that's the sort of game that should be designed to be played one-handed. Oh, oh, there you go. Uh, Gross. SVS, SVS Guru two thousand gives two euros. As speaking of Rule thirty four, Pal World already at seven hundred plus pictures. So what are people getting off to? Or do I not uh, want to know? You, you do want not know. want to know. You because the human know. characters are just, you know. Generic NPCs, it's not right? The human characters. No, I figured it was. I figured it wasn't. I just, I just don't get who would get off on that. It's like the tree and and the crafting bench with big tits. <laughs> oh. uh, Wesley Thomas gives five Canadian dollars and says, "I don't get one visual novels and two mascot horror. Uh, one's yeah. a book with delusions of grandeur; the other's for someone else to play for you." I'm yeah. that. Guy, when I was a kid, uh, my hobbies were very compartmentalized. So books were books, videos were videos, and games are very gameplay heavy. And so whenever it's something that's very like, oh, it's super cinematic or just super a um, lot of reading, it's like I could have just read this book. But there's yeah. a few that it's when they go, this could not have been done in a book, like say Disco Elysium, right? Mm -hmm. or it's just like, oh, I absolutely love where this went with it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of with that. Just a little bit. Hmm. Let people Mascot like what they horror. like, I say. Yeah, like Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a, a, a certain segment of games that are very popular, not necessarily because the games are good, but because people enjoy watching other people play and react to them. That's Yeah, that's what the Zoomers like, isn't it? Watching mm -hmm. fucking Markiplier and whoever else like having an amusing scream. And, you know, does that make it any less of a game or does that just make it a, a game of a different caliber? These are the, the heady things that we don't have to deal with. It's funny you say that because Hello Neighbor went that same route as well. But mm -hmm. in the sequel, 
he leaned super into the someone's gonna play this and you're gonna watch them and there's lore and stuff like that for Matt Pat to find and the community was like it was a bad game though like <laughs> even the community went this feels like Matt Pat bait well they went oh. Sharknado is then the thing it's like <laughs> we we love a bad movie we love a movie that is so bad it's good but when they try to make a movie that's so bad yeah. it's good it no longer has that special thing yeah yeah, because it's the uh, unwittingness of the director that uh, makes it right. fun. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Anyway. So lean too hard. Yeah, go ahead. Moving on. Storm Templar gives $2 and says, Welcome to the Lazel Club, Jack. Best grill. It's that's, funny. That's the one I choose. Internet users seem to get very territorial when it comes to waifus. <laughs> I mean, you should have seen the comments on that extra punctuation I did when I was talking about Persona and mentioned that GA was my waifu. <laughs> Some people, I'm sure, loved it. Uh, heads up, everybody. I killed Shadowheart. I killed her dead. Just oh absolutely my God. murdered her. The one with the bangs. That's the one with the bangs. And you know what? She wanted to fight me because she wanted to kill that angel lady. And I, I, she fought me. She lost. I killed her on the floor. Dead. Out of the party. Take that, waifus. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Gold Perak gives five dollars. There's someone out there better make Starstruck Vagabond porn now and send the link to Yahtzee personally. You know what? I'd be flattered. I'd be flattered. I'm flattered by any like fan art because it's nice to know that <laughs> my work can occupy a person's head like that. And I'm not go. like I ain't no like prudish mimsy. I understand that porn exists and people like it. And if people make porn of my wife, who's I'll consider that you know job well done. Oh, well, there you go. So if you're going to make uh, Starstruck Vagabond porn, make it good. Yeah, put the effort in. Put know. the effort in, yeah. Great. Uh, Squirtle Squad 420 gives $10 and says, As an RTS enjoyer, I feel it scratches a similar itch as puzzle games as I figure out the best types of units, best placements, and timings to attack, stroke, defend, at least with well-designed missions. Hmm. See, I like a puzzle game, but I like it because it's figuring out the one specific thing you have to do <laughs> It's not like, oh, you could be, you have to make a thousand decisions and you have to make sure they're all right. <laughs> Agreed. And I think like there are games like XCOM that can have like a puzzle element feel to it. Oh, I can place my, my things just right here, but it's, it's different pacing and different uh, uh, modes of intensity. Yeah. Flank, flank, always be flanking ABF. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. It feels like um, the hardcore ones, they're a lot cooler because the ones that try to be more accessible usually have one strategy that, like Yahtzee said, yeah. flank, zerg, and then I go, oh, why do people like these? I'm not sure. But well, it's X, interesting. Well, X, we yeah, I think in XCOM it's Overwatch as well. Mm -hmm. Flank and Overwatch. The, always, the F. always be Overwatching. Yes. Yep. Always mm -hmm. be Overwatching. Uh, the Piss Bandit is $5. It says, I couldn't get into Transistor no matter how hard I tried. Combat board the piss out of me. Piss and is that, why you've, is that why you've taken to stealing piss? It takes it was, the piss. You were well, bored out was, of you? That was another super giant isometric game that presumably would be lost on Jack. It's fair. I, uh, I think I like that one the least because, again, the combat, I felt two degrees too detached mm -hmm. because I was not there in the character and now I have to piece this together. I liked maths. I was very good at it in school, but never in a very formal kind of way where it's like, I was that kid where I go, here's the problem, here's the answer, show your work. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, no. Yes, no. no. I don't need to get on my level. Yeah, they would take points away from me. So what I would do is I would go write the question, skip a few lines, write the answer, and then fill drivel in the middle. And yeah. I was like, you don't check these. There's no way you want to watch TV. You don't want to do yeah. this. And no. <laughs> There. The, answer, the answer is 17 because bingy, wingy, dingy, dangy. Always hey. is. Always is. Great. Uh, Alex M gives five pounds and says, Great to see you again, Jack. Love you all lots and lots. I don't get gacha games. I understand it's easy dopamine, but they're just not for me. Oh. Yeah, I don't get why you'd want to keep sinking money into a game you've already paid for. Huh? See, oh, that's a different concept of like, yeah, paying. And free to play games, uh, I could never. Again, well, you know, well, are, are you? We're not people with gambling addictions, I assume. Not anymore. No. Mm. 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 I have nothing to add to this, so I'm going to say, mm. Mm. "There you go." 
It's more like uh, poker. Minimize, like, yes, there is a degree of chance, but how come the championships are, they tend to be played by the same people over and over. Mm-hmm. And it's because, mm-hmm. like, bluffing each other, the skill of the game, and minimizing chance as much as you can. But the rush of knowing that sometimes it is not going to go your way. I guess, like, XCOM, right? That 60% chance, you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sebastian Mikulek comes back with $5 and says, I hate level scaling in RPGs. It ruins the feeling of progression. I want to get stomped early and be a god late, which is why I love Piranha Bytes games. Hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think that's, Hard uh, agree, yeah. I mean, if you're just going to have everything scaled to your level for the whole way through, you might as well just keep everything on level one. But it's different, you see. So when the DPS is the same, but now it's a dragon instead of a rat. I had that problem with Diablo 4, because I was having trouble with a boss in Diablo 4. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, okay, I'll go off and grind up some levels and uh, yeah, then come too. back <laughs> and kick its ass. And then, yeah, then I went back, he did the exact same thing, apparently. Yeah, just all, we, all, we, all right, grind break, both of yeah. you. <laughs> yes. Like, you took a grind break, I'm going to take a grind break too. Yeah. <laughs> Every press up you don't do is one the enemy could be taking. <gasps> Bum, bum, bum. Mm. There you go. Uh, Rialan Quake gives five dollars and says RTS and 4X games have always eluded me, despite my fervent love for TRPGs like Final Fantasy Tactics, Troubleshooter, and Fire Emblem. I don't think it's that hard to understand that if you don't like real-time strategy, but you do like turn-based, because as mm-hmm. I say, it does turn-based doesn't feel overwhelming because it's turn-based. You got as much time in the world you need to figure out what the next move is. What's that one thing that I can do right now? Whereas in a real time yeah. strategy, oh, wait, this one thing and this one thing. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That's the yeah. genre. It's called, oh, fuck. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, it goes well, but then it's like, oh, fuck. I was cooking six things at once and everything's overflowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Evil Apple Juice gives $5 and says, Sick at home today and can catch you wonderful people live. I don't understand visual novels. It's rough for me to click through a book on a screen. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. I'm sick today to too. Uh, Evil Apple Juice, I've got a cold. Exerted myself a bit too much over the weekend, oh. taking the kids to the park on both days. Ew, family time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And the kids are little gem, gem machines, you know. Yeah. Like I yeah. was, Never I was at, I was at home with the youngest mm-hmm. on the couch the other day, and she found my laptop. And for the umpteenth time, I said, "We don't touch Daddy's laptop." And she, and uh, after I said that, she like just deliberately picked it up and licked it. Oh. And I was uh. like, well, why, why you got to make me do a thing that's gonna make you cry now, little child? <laughs> Oh, that is biological warfare, that. <laughs> I know. Oh, I love God. that. And no, you know, it never gets better with, with children, but, you know, mine are in high school now, and they still bring illnesses to everywhere, and it's, it will never end. The children will always make you sick. It's terrible. You'd think your immune system would catch up at some point. Oh, it's because no. we're not the ones in school and interacting with all these, so, like, it's not being strengthened. That's why I'm, I make a... I make an active effort to lick the road in front of my house. <laughs> you you also lick Yahtzee's laptop. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I was a kid, I picked my nose and ate it. Yeah, uh-huh. there you go. And that was probably exercising my immune system. But now I don't because I'm polite and a nice grown up. I pick and my nose and wipe it off on a tissue like other grown ups do. I have heard someone legitimately argue pro booger eating because it strengthens your immune system. Here's the thing. I, I, well, considering <laughs> true, I got ill gross. a lot less when I was a kid, I can believe it. Yeah, no, like it is a thing. It is genuinely a thing. There's also um, like a cultured caca, if you will. This gets uh, gut better gut bio um, fauna, better, better gut bio, flora, better gut bio, Yeah, the flora. Thank you sure. God, for knowing words. You uh, you put that in someone else, and it'll fix them right up. So like, yes, it works 100. percent It's still icky. I can't bring myself to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I like put it in? Can I put my boogers in a smoothie? Like, will that work? Or do I have to eat them raw? You can my... cook them if you want. Yeah. Pan fry them. <laughs> See, I'm still occasionally tempted because you know you like the taste of your own boogers. Another thing I never thought I had to explain to someone. Is that true? I I have the, legitimately I like I've the never eaten my boogers. Um, I, I was a picky eater growing up, so I oh. never ate my boogers. <laughs> well, maybe it's an acquired taste that you have to. 
you have to start early. Am I going to have but, to start? Uh, am I going to have to at least eat one booger in my life? Maybe. Well, Maybe. Your boogers well, are as much based just, on where, where you are, you know? What's all this it just, stuff getting there? It just tastes like um, salt. So, you know, it just gives you a little salty snack. No, like, a little pretzel, like a little pretzel. I'm not going to do it a on little, camera. Don't ask. Mine have a little umami to them. Like, there's some, there's some MSG in mine. <laughs> Maybe some people just genetically have nice tasting snot and they're more likely to turn into booger eaters, and some Maybe. people just don't. Maybe that, or it's, yeah, a, a medical thing, because like uh, diabetes makes your urine sweeter. I mean, oh I've got God. that gene that makes cilantro taste horrible. There it is. Sure. Maybe it's a similar thing. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, it's equal but opposite. You do, you don't eat cilantro, but your boogers taste amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just green things. <laughs> Everything that's green just switched around. Brussels sprouts taste like apple flavored jelly babies to me. <laughs> wow. Oh. Anyway, <clears throat> Chubby gives a hundred asses and says, "I don't get Metroidvanias. Most of them don't have a good story, so you're just backtracking, getting collectibles." The Messenger and the new Prince of Persia are the exception. Lol. Good to see Jack again. Cheers. Oh, well, it's just around. completeness. It's a combination of exploration and completeness that um, appeal attracts people to Metroidvania. It's also, yeah, uh, I would say they do have story, but it's more in the old Dark Souls kind of like find the yeah lore story. And story. Ten, yeah, story tends to be like a de-emphasized in Metroidvanias specifically because the. Uh, it, the focus has to be on an environment that makes sense for the gameplay rather than an environment that makes sense for the story, I suppose. I think like Metroidvanias are the simplest visual representation of power progression. The, here is the mm. thing you cannot do. You get an item, you can now do the thing that you could not do before. It's so simple that that I like that feeling of like, oh, I'm going to get that double jump. You fucking know I am. <laughs> yeah, it opens, opens it up. I played a, a Metroidvania demo recently called Rat Trap. Had uh -huh. the uh, the picture thing from Prince of Persia. But also, it, it just threw me for the loop because I was like, oh, here comes the double jump. It's like, no, you're a rat in a ball. You don't double jump. Instead, you jump up and then you smash the ball down and it bounces you. Oh. I was like, oh, oh. all right, you're subverting Fine. it. All right, I'll keep yeah, an eye on you. I've seen and then, that. I feel like I've seen that mechanic in places. Yeah, and then it swap. It's a rat that swaps. Like I think he he throws his brain into a machine and it'll go into a mech elsewhere, and then you have to unlock other things. I was like, oh, cool, different abilities. Cool. Oh, great. That's fair enough. There you go. Uh, Gabira Bustos gives ten thousand COPs. Although it's still a green super chat, so that can't be worth that much. And says this coming from a psychologist and a fan. Yahtzee, you and Frost look a lot happier and content in Second Wind. It's really incredible. Well, I'm glad somebody noticed. I'm glowing, aren't I? I yes. Like glow back, yeah. <laughs> and yes. Jack, you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking up responsibilities. I, I, uh, mm. This is why I'm not uh, in front of the camera so often. I look terrible because I have real responsibilities. Ah. Uh. Uh, the Edge 3 gives $5 and says, I love grand strategy games like Hearts of Iron and Europa Universalis, but I understand why some people don't. How <laughs> m magnanimous of you to look down on us and uh, be understanding, you mm -hmm. high and mighty great grand strategy liking let's, person, you. Let's not make fun of this too much. As we know, people can get very attached to their preferences, and so let's just all take a moment and understand that not everyone will like the things we like and vice versa. <laughs> That's a fun thing. But grand strategy people, they, they do, uh, they're the most noble and get the most sex. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, that explains a few things. <laughs> uh, reflexes of a dead cat gives $5 and uh, fittingly says, truth, Jack, reflexes do get worse, especially if you're a dead cat. Entropy comes for us all in the end. For me, it's just not being able to move the mouse as fast because my wrist hurts. It's my patience. It's just wore thin. I was just getting way too mad loading in. It's all the same. It's all you're, the same. You're not, this is probably not what you want to hear, Yachts. Uh, but yeah, there are people like me who would get pissed at people who were not a challenge. But I wouldn't, in the end, I wouldn't get mad at them. I would get mad at the matchmaker. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Samson 143 VR gives 499 US and says, Where does VR gaming fall for you all? Heard good things about Asgard's Wrath 2. Oh, God. It's got to be I... very gameplay focused for me. Yeah, I like VR, but I can't play it for very long because it gives me headaches. And I, got... I, 
I got prescription lenses for my VR headsets, so it wouldn't give me headaches. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got, and I still get headaches. It worked. Oh. Uh, I, I, I can't. I still cannot fully justify VR, even though I have found several things I really, really enjoy about it. Uh, it's I. I have to shower afterwards. Like it's too much of a workout. <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah. Which is how right. I'm treating it now. Oh, I can get like a half hour VR in. That'll be my workout. <laughs> it's always going to be a niche, but you know, yeah, people like their niches. Absolutely. Uh, Thought takes gives five dollars and says I compare early games to early films. Very few people watch Citizen Kane because it is as entertaining as modern cinema. Oh, I mean. Tetris is a baller. Still, yeah, Tetris still is like timeless. Time. Yeah, and I went I, back and played um, the first Legacy of Kane game, and it just felt like really dumb. Like, the what, like the game design was just so old; there was nothing relevant in it. Nothing in it that was relevant to anything about modern games for sensibilities. Oh, it's like finally like a rotary phone, eh? Just like yeah, I guess. I. Unfold. I will challenge you that Citizen Kane is as entertaining as modern cinema. Citizen Kane is uh, is fundamental to the history of cinema, uh, groundbreaking piece of work in uh, in what we know as the modern cinematic language, and it is boring as fuck. It yeah. is so goddamn slow. <laughs> I've had to ask. I've had to say, you wonder why it's never been remade. <laughs> That's why, because it's just a guy going, "What was that name again?" <laughs> oh yeah, and dies. It's it's literally the story of some asshole doing asshole things and being a bigger asshole at every turn. Uh, it can never be remade because uh, everyone who goes to film school and who studies film uh, has to read so much about it. No one wants to remake it. No one wants to be the asshole who remakes it. No one wants to be. Oh, who's the guy that remade Psycho? That asshole. No one wants to be that <laughs> asshole. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, well, he remade people. it. He it's remade just... it shot for shot, didn't he? Like uh, exactly the same as the original. Remade it shot for shot. Only he did uh, update some of the things that were hinted at. Like uh, there was a scene where Norman Bates is like watching uh, the the young lady shower. Uh, in the remake, he has Norman Bates actually masturbating while watching her shower. Something they couldn't do in the old ones. But you know what? Still an asshole. We don't need to, re to be remade. Uh, it's a boring, boring movie. There are modern movies that are still have the top tier cinematic quality that are uh, have modern sensibilities that move a little faster, have a little more happening to them. So I will yeah. argue with you that it is as I, entertaining. Is Citizen I Kane interesting like demo of films? I'm sorry, say that again for us. Is Citizen Kane like the tech demo of films? Almost it feels almost like a <laughs> cocoon to me. You know, I heard an interesting fact about Psycho. Uh, in like a, it was like a trivia like game thing I was playing, but apparently um, the the shower murder scene was one thing, but the really controversial thing about Psycho is that one of the first films that actually shows a toilet on screen. You are correct. That is a correct thing. Oh God! Imagine <laughs> any film nowadays would show them to to them would kill someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, very, very controversial. Uh, tech demo, like there, there were some. Uh, so you know, the the reason why Citizen Kane is so popular, real short, abridged version, is it was one of the uh, first movies, arguably the most popular movie at the time, that used the camera position and camera movement to help tell the story. It literally inventing modern cinematography before mm -hmm. everything was shot kind of like a stage play. Uh, yeah. There. W there were tech demos beforehand, mostly in foreign films that utilized these practices, but Citizen Kane was the big one uh, here in America. So Yeah, I remember saying, like, films uh, started off just copying stage plays and eventually discovered the strengths of their own medium. Of course. Video games need to do the same fucking thing. Of course. Uh, start, start off ripping off films and then discover the strengths of, strengths of their own medium. Absolutely. And so, like, uh, Citizen Kane is... It would be like less of a tech demo and more like, you know, so like Tetris. One. Tetris was a, you know, started off as a tech demo, but then they actually made it into a game. So that, like, the first release of Tetris was Citizen Kane. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, okay, Tsunami Dusha gives ten dollars and says, "I wish I could get into mobile games in general. Phone touch screens fail to read my fingers. I default to playing handheld games mostly for the buttons." Well, that sounds like a you problem, Tsunami you are, Dusha. You are a skilled metalworker or something. It sounds like you got yeah. some calloused fingertips here. We, are you in like 
Maybe. Were you, in Were you in Men in Black and they burnt your fingerprints off in with a big oh. weird machine? Mm-hmm. Or something? Damn, they Maybe. can't access their phones. Uh, Dr. Theo gives $5 and says, okay, last super chat from me. I'm a huge fan of the Galaxy books with the second one being my favorite book of all time. Super excited to hear what you got. Well, that's uh, a high bar to clear. <laughs> I hope you will not be as disappointed as I suspect you will be oh, by the damn. third book, Dr. Theo. They're very, they're very fun reads. No, oh, thank you for saying so. And everyone should buy them. They never... And everyone should buy them. And if you buy them via Audible, it's Yahtzee reading them to you. It's double the double the pleasure, double your fun. Yeah, and you better bloody well appreciate it because that's why my throat keeps getting infections. Apparently, mm, there you go. Uh, Kaunte gives uh, two euros and says Yahtzee has that dog in him. Got the dog in him. Dog yep. in him. Got yep, he's still there. Why must uh, I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? There's his <laughs> ear. And uh, there's his other ear. Nope, so nope. you can, like, figure out the uh, logistics. Any uh, Funkadelic fans, Parliament? No? All right, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, ready? Sorry, or was that a... Yeah, it was some... Sorry, are those, old pe- are those old people references? These are those old, old, old people references. Old town. Come on now. No. <laughs> Uh, Gull Pirak gives five dollars and says, "Yeah, so given your enjoyment of nautical adventures and horror, have you a nautical horror novel to recommend? If not, just a good horror novel." I don't actually read horror novels, Gull Pirak. Oh. I like horror video games. I like the odd horror film, but when I'm reading a book, I want to read either something funny or something that's a rollicking, exciting adventure. You don't want to pay, yeah, because <laughs> you don't want to. The FNAF of books, where you turn the page and just says "boo" in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, but, that genuinely surprises me at I, I would assume that you would also enjoy a good nautical horror well Subnautica? I, I can't, really ex- can't really explain it i oh. just don't like reading horror books it's not and that's it's, fine it's not, it's not the thing i want to read oh. oh my god hold on i got um actually atomic dog is a george clinton solo track not a parliament funkadelic track many apologies okay. to the funkaholics out there Uh, Humane Shield gives 499 and says, You should try the card game Muffin Time. It's a more competitive version, Uno. Hi. Okay. Thank you. It's well, more competitive. Uno it. gets pretty competitive. <laughs> Uno is just Crazy Eights, isn't it? Because uh, Crazy Eights, I know. My family played a lot of Crazy Eights. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, and actually, uh, Rob Rowland, uh, thank you for joining a ga- member uh, member of the Green Gang for one month. Says hi. Thank you for that. Hi. I will. I'm going to open up a new tab with Muffin Adventure. Uh, Muffin C- time. C- CJ Weigel gives five dollars and says we lost Atlanta in February in Pandemic Legacy. Definitely strained a few friendships. Lol. There you go. You know. <laughs> you know, Pandemic Legacy is no joke. Mm. wash your hands people <laughs> also wash your hands people oh, thank you for that link eric uh, cs csi freak gives 499 british pounds and says put mary poppins on in the background while playing on my phone and suddenly looked up and thought what the hell is toasty doing in this film <laughs> <laughs> that's right edwin no. is like the grandpa grandpa joe or whatever <laughs> yeah i think i remember that <laughs> that's right you know, like they go to visit that old man and he, he makes everyone drink weird stuff and dance on the ceiling. That's Edwin. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's where the voice comes from. That's uh, Snagglepuss as well, isn't it? Yeah, uh, that's, that's how I think of him. I always think about him as Snagglepuss. I think Snagglepuss was doing an Edwin impression, but okay. I, d- I don't know for sure is, is what mm. I will say. I just think it's a funny voice. Ooh, got a big old deep red super chat next from Ato Urabari, who gives a thousand asses to say, great to see Jack's back. Guess Marty is in prison with Yuji Naka. Personally, I love grand strategy like Stellaris stroke WHF Total War. I see why they are difficult to get into, too much shit going on, but they have an unparalleled potential for epic emergent storytelling. Mm. If you say so. A story in those? Wow. <laughs> emergent story. Oh, oh, sorry. I get you. It's like a like the Crusader Kings thing. Like yeah. they just put a load of sure. random elements out, and uh, a story occurs. Mm-hmm. 
And then Ato Arabari then has a member chat, a member for two months in the Green Gang, and says, also, Jack, you're an amazing DM. Kudos to you. I, I try. Uh, a lot of improv training, active listening. That's all you need to do. Listen, yeah, to, listen to your players, uh, react to them, take a moment to take it in. That's, that's all it is. Just listening. All the games. Gives 499 and says, I'm 32 minutes behind, but I don't understand hyper-realistic games, especially realistic sports games. Why not play them in real life? Because it's hard. All the games. <laughs> it Ooh. makes you sweaty. We're big, we're big, we're big, we're big, big belly. I can't play football. My thing was, uh, was a hyper-realism uh, just because eventually it won't be that realistic. Like you could, they don't age well, hyper-realistic games. No. Mm -hmm. Like I could a, like stuff that was being passed off as the most realistic graphics like uh, 10, 15 years ago. Look at Oblivion one of these days. Christ. I don't know. <laughs> I, we, we were playing Like a Dragon yesterday, and we saw Sega Bass, Bass Fishing in that. I sunk mm -hmm. so many hours into that game. I was like, it's just like if I was out there. And no, I, I think I was just, you know, something was wrong with me as a child. <laughs> and if you liked Like a Dragon so much, perhaps you'll enjoy this week's fully ramblematic oh. on Wednesday. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, I never understood oh, what you guys saw in those until I, we, we played that for two hours. I was like, this is just Seinfeld. <laughs> That's Jerry, Kramer, <laughs> and uh, like Elaine, like they're all here. Did you get to George. Hawaii in two hours? No, was, no I oh. kind of doubted you would. Yeah. Oh, so he, he proposed on the first date. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's yeah. hilarious. Like, he's, a lovable, he's a lovable now. doof, that boy. Yeah, I love him. Uh, Camden Ninja gives five dollars. Says hi, Jack. Have you heard of Jubencha? Are tabletop gamers generally aware of it? I've never, I'd never heard of it, and I'm floored to discover its popularity. I'm, I'm googling it right now. I don't know what that is either. Oh, that was um, what was it? Um, Eve oh. mentioned this. It's, it's like uh, this craze in in China. It's like um, I... history larping. I do subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel People Make Games, and that, that's the, what their latest video is about. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, those gents in general, um, so, but I haven't watched the video yet, so I don't know anything about Jubencha. All right. I will watch uh, that YouTube video, though, and find out more. Catch up with him later. Yes. Eric, the, uh, the producer... You know, you could just, you know, send us a private message if you wanted to say something, Eric. Just send it gives, as a chat, Eric. He gives us a hundred asses to say, did you know there's a card battle game for the PS Vita that you need to stroke the console using the touchpad from both sides to involve the cards? Don't ask me how I know or why I ended up owning it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I feel I think haptic feedback would probably be better little, for point games. Yeah. A little bit of this motion. <laughs> Uh, okay. for, let's pour one out for the PS Vita. Oh, <laughs> thanks for hogging Gravity Rush and Persona 4 Golden for ages. Hell of a system. Hell of a system. Uh, Gold Tooth's Leg is $5. And says, question for all three of you. Do you think Nintendo is going to take down Power World? My honest opinion, they're not going to. Well, if you actually play Power World, you'll discover it doesn't really play like Pokemon at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, as for the characters looking like Pokemon, Nintendo can't copyright thing that looks a bit like an animal, but it's not. Right. Yeah. You, you cannot copyright gameplay mechanics. No, or art styles. <laughs> Putting creature in ball mechanics. does not equal Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, so no, I don't think they will. And they've already taken down uh, mods for Power World that let you play as Ash and Pikachu, and that got right. taken yeah. down immediately. Yeah, so if I'm, so it's either no, they're not going to care, or they're like, let's find as much stuff as possible so no one fucks with us ever again. Um, but yeah, so, maybe they're slowly building a case behind the scenes. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, I don't. No, think so. I, I can't. I like you know, they'll go after Pal. They'll go after you know, uh, cassette beasts. They'll go after uh, yeah, Moonstone Tem -tem. Island. They'll go after Tem Tem. They'll go after all the Pokemon likes. And I can't imagine they care that much. Uh, I, uh, but if Pal World continues to be as crazy popular as it is, which I personally don't believe it will be, uh, then maybe Nintendo will. Maybe Nintendo will care. 
I think Nintendo and Game Freak should focus their energy on making actually good Pokemon games because it's a means of because apparently, you know, audiences are starved for a good Pokemon game. They keep <laughs> running to these third party ones. Ooh, there you go. There you go. Anyway, mm-hmm. Alfie's making some very odd noises down there. He must be uh, dreaming about uh, snorting McDonald's chocolate milkshakes up through his nose. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, where was I? You were fill my ass fill up. Fill my ass up, yeah. Good old fill my ass up, who gives us 50 Norwegian krona to say, speaking as someone whose first gaming hook was CNC Red Alert, Brutal Legend helped ease me into its RPG genre, which I previously couldn't stand. Mm. Yeah, I played Brutal Legend, and I didn't really like how it tries to force you into playing an RTS, as well as all the other stuff. Hmm. I eventually just got through all the RTS stuff by just vaguely engaging with it, and then, like, getting in my car and running over all the all the enemy armies. Yeah, it's more about, if you can get one that makes up for my lack of dexterity, because an RTS game, if I were to be playing it, not but 10 seconds in, I've alt-tabbed and activated sticky keys, right? Like, it has to make up yeah. for my inability to actually play it. <clears throat> Evil Apple Juice gives $5. It says, how do you feel about deck builders? My optimization brain gets too stressed out that I'm not playing it well enough, and I often pass, sadly. Now, I'm going to be a little pedantic here, Evil Apple Juice. You might be talking about collectible card games and not deck building games. They're two very different genres. Deck builders are, like, ultimately too random to, like, play optimally, aren't they? Yeah. Well, the point is, like, you just get randomly drawn cards from the deck. I'd like to think that. Oh. Well, the, the generally speaking, you know, in, in both categories, you are engine building, right? You are attempting to build uh, an engine that starts a perpetual motion uh, to make you more powerful. But in a deck building game, you start, uh, everyone starts with the exact same cards, and then you just build your best deck by removing cards or placing certain cards in it. Whereas in a collectible card game, you get to choose the cards that start the deck to build your deck. So two mm-hmm. very different genres. Let's make sure we're clear on that. Okay, then. Uh, do, <laughs> as, do. as I love deck building games and hate collectible card games. Yeah, it's a difference in that. Slay the Spire versus like Gwent. Right, exactly. Yeah. And uh, the reason I, I'm with you, Evil Apple Juice, the reason why I hate collectible card games is because I don't want to sift through the hundreds of cards to try to build my optical draw deck. Just give me give me all the cards I can have and let me build a, a personal deck off of that. Hmm. Anyway, uh, James Miola gives four ninety nine and says, what happened to triple indie games like Flower or Journey? Did that sort of indie business model with strong publisher support vanish completely? And that just double A. So. I mean, the industry as a whole is sort of going through a shakeup right now. This is why everyone's getting laid off every bloody mm-hmm. turn. I think Ubisoft's latest Prince of Persia game is sort of the current manifestation of the triple indie attitude. I like that name. Just the implication I'm, of a lot of money and like, here, you know, I'll leave you alone, kind of. I'm I'm fine with it if it means interesting games get made, if they just take all the bloody money that would have been spent on like the $100 billion uh, blockbuster game that would takes five years to make. And they just split it up into a bunch of interesting smaller projects with creative control over them. Also, didn't we just have like the hugest triple indie game ever with Dave the Diver? I was thinking oh, yeah. Hi-Fi Rush. Or Hi- Hi-Fi Rush, yeah. That was another yeah. big triple indie game. Triple indie. Yeah, oh. I mean, they're all that. They're, they're out there. If you, if you pay attention to the stuff that gets the triple A marketing, then of course you wouldn't see them. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, broaden your horizons. They're still around. John Connor gives two Canadian dollars. Says, finally, Jack's on Windbreakers. Love to see it. The thing is, I just don't have that many interesting things to say, and so they need to spread out my appearances. Yeah. He has to wait for Marty to need an understudy. (laughs) Pretty much. Pretty much. Absolutely. Uh, Tarb, Tarb Orcs. Gives ten the... Canadian dollars. Says, "Here's some gamer heresy. I don't get Souls likes, probably because I don't have time to get good. Also, the Bethesda face games, Fallout Three, ruined them for me." <laughs> there you go. I I think it's in, entirely understandable. I think anyone who says like 
I, you know, I'm five hours into Dark Souls and I don't understand what's going on and I'm not having a good time. That is valid criticism that I understand completely. <laughs> yeah, but having said that, that's what my like initial reaction was. Mm -hmm. And then sometime later, with some, you know, with some preparation, <laughs> with some after a bit of like homework. Yeah. Uh, um, I went back to it and now it's one, one of my favorite games of all time. One yeah. hundred percent. I feel I don't like the genre. I just like four of them specifically. In the way that I like Lord of the Rings, I just don't care for fantasy movies. But I like, right. I like Lord of the Rings. Mm. 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 Interesting. All right, I'll give you that. Uh, <clears throat> Humane Shield saw ninety nine says Jack. Any chance of a behind the scenes stroke tutorial on Foundry VT in the creationists of a Adventure Is Nigh episode? Humane Shield, how do you feel about exactly doing that thing? That is not only uh, a chance, that is planned to happen. I'm going to show you how I uh, make my maps. Uh, we are going to bring those maps into foundries, how to set up NPCs, um, how I organize my foundry screen. We, it, 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 it will be an edited video, uh, all planned, part of the plan. That will be out after. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for getting toasty up there. Um, that is, uh, that will come out after season three is out. Yes. As well, I'm a big believer in Foundry VTT. So I'll show y'all how it works. There you go. Uh, beneath one, 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 one gifted one whole entire second wind membership. Ooh, great. It went to timeless days. It seems. Oh, well, there you go. lucky old them. And then pure pyro gives two euros. Says I can't get into puzzle games or walking Sims. I like puzzle games. What are you dumb? Are you are you a big thicky bobo? Is that why you don't like it? I am, and you know what? I don't like it. Uh, you and I have talked about this. Yes, uh, Return to Oberdin is a phenomenal game, an mm -hmm. absolute masterpiece uh, of storytelling, of puzzle design, and I hate that game so much because it told me i was a big dummy dum dum at the end and it said start over you absolute idiot <laughs> i didn't know that was well, a thing well we can't stop let everyone catch up jack here on <laughs> the smart people train then it's if not you, as fun well, anymore yeah. otherwise there'd if be you, no value in calling it the smart people train if you don't answer enough of the things correctly, it will just call you an idiot and say, start over, you idiot. So, I believe uh, it. It's yeah, a I, I, didn't even, I didn't even know it did that because I'm a smart boy <laughs> who figured it out. You are also someone who has a history of uh, nautical uh, vocabulary. That, yeah, yeah right, fine. I, I knew me. what a midshipman was. That yeah. Didn't like, help me identify Captain's... the Chinese top men. Oh. I don't know. How many guesses those nautical teams? You had a leg up, you did. Uh, right, walking fine. Sims? How do you guys feel? I, I, like, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like them. I like the my video games to have a bit of game in them. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Go. Agreed. Uh, the Dogmatic Director gives $5 and says, Pal World rips off Pokemon. Sounds like Tekken rips off Virtua Fighter. They're too yeah. different for me to agree they're the same. It's funny because Virtual Fighter was made to compete as Tekken. The guy was, I'm right. just going to make Tekken again. And I don't. It's not that. that valid a comparison because Pal World is a survival crafter and Pokemon is an RPG, mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. Tekken is a fighting game and Virtual Fighter is a fighting game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, just my little. Yeah, I, think, I think a lot of people don't understand that like how different pal world is like even yeah. to the the open world pokemon games pal world is shockingly remarkably a different loop yes people yeah. are just uh, latching onto the argument online and not fair. really looking any further fair uh yellow jello gives five dollars it says if you could pick any d-list action movie star from the 80s or to put that another way, any action movie star from the 80s, and give them a video game of any kind, who would it be, and why is it the McNamara twins? <laughs> I have a feeling that this was uh, specifically meant for me. 
Uh, the McNamara twins, a, uh, s- uh, some twin brothers from Canada who ran a successful uh, karate club who tried to make a couple movies, and they are very, very bad movies. Yeah, um, I think I remember those episodes of Best of the Worst. Uh, twin Dragon Encounter uh, is one of them. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal movies. Uh, if they're in so bad, they're good movies. Uh, no, you don't give them to the McNamara twins because uh, then uh, it will be all about like removing your shirts and chopping wood. We want we want actual fighting in our in our D list uh, action movie uh, '80s game. So the we give it to. Ooh, okay. We give it to Jean Claude Van Damme. I was thinking that, and then I was like, <laughs> "Is he D tier? If he is, that's who I send." Uh, in the '80s, he was. I'm going to say in the '90s, he moved up to C or B tier. Uh, but in the right. '80s, he was B tier, and uh, then it's it's half like dress up uh, life sim where you're making yourself look as beautiful as possible, and half a fighting game, and that's a game I want to play. He's uh. uh... He's got a cameo in Mortal Kombat 1, you know? You, there's an yeah. extra unlockable skin where you can switch Johnny Cage to look like Jean-Claude Van Damme and have Jean-Claude Van Damme's voice acting. Beautiful. Uh, with blood uh, sports, specifically, yeah. Blood, uh, for, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme was the original alien in Predator, in the mm. Predator movie. Uh, but he didn't realize, Jean-Claude Van Damme didn't realize that he was going to be in a costume. And once he did, threw a hissy fit in the jungle while wearing the costume. So they had to completely, not only like recast the creature, but redesign the creature. Also, the creature looked really stupid. But mm-hmm. uh, he, threw an, he threw a goddamn hissy fit because no one would see his beautiful face. <laughs> He's uh, Belgian, isn't he? Jean-Claude yep. Van Damme? The muscles, the from, Brussels muscles. from muscles, yeah. The yeah. Brussels from us. The muscle. <laughs> the, the muscles. Yeah, right. But the correct way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alex Armstrong gives five dollars and says, "I can't have fun with games like Minecraft, Ark Survival, and Pal World, where the objective is simply to craft your own projects. I'm very goal oriented." Hmm. Yeah, me too. But I got, was able to get into Minecraft by saying, "Hey, I'm going to build a skull fortress," and then that was the goal that what I was you, oriented on. What if there's goals, but it won't give you pop-ups? Yeah. How does that make you feel? There's goals, but it won't give you pop-ups. Yeah, Terraria, to me, is like, if you like Minecraft, but wanted more goals, but it never at any point goes, do this, do that. It, it has, like, end game, it has end bosses, sure. it has things to collect, but it doesn't tell you. Mm. So. It's, it's tricky, where, like, some of it is make your own fun. I think Pal World does a good job of saying, like, oh, you eventually want to go, you know, fight the, the local boss or whatever. You need to get stronger. In order to get stronger, you need to do A, B, and C. So, like, it has a good enough loop, and it does a good enough job of kind of showing you the possible goals. Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> like, in your Minecraft, in your Stardew Valley, you do need to have some player set goals, and that does make the experience more fun. Don't lose hope. The end is in sight. Palash T gave us one ninety nine, and says, "Love New York Times crossword, but can't get into word games." Okay, well that is a word game, so apparently you can. Have you done get uh, into some kinds well, of word different. games? It's like a word search versus a, a, a crossword. Yeah. Have you done connections? Oh yes, I do the connections. I do the spelling bee. I do Wordle. I do the lot of them. Christ, you're getting your your sub your subscriptions <laughs> money, aren't you? Like I never, I never got the game aspect of Wordle because it's just like if you guess the word right, you're not really doing anything. Yeah, but, it's just mastermind. It's just yeah. So, but connections is uh, to me the really good like game of it. It's like, ooh, how do these four words? What do these four words have in common? How can I group these? Is that oh, yes. I really enjoy connections. I like that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. more abstract. And it's free and the, to play. Uh, so. And the so, spelling bee is just anagrams that I like anyway. <laughs> See, I like that the, that connections idea because it was like, oh, I got into your head. I guess that's why I enjoyed Family Feud so much, where I go, I know what the populace thinks. I know what every all you peasants. But yeah, I really recommend connections. Me. It's that to me is the a really fun daily word game where you actually have to do some deduction, which is always yeah. nice. Yeah, I like it. They always try to throw you off. Mm, they do, and it's really really fun. Yeah. So recommend it. Go do it. It's in the New York Times game app thing that we're yes. in. I do it every morning while sitting on the toilet doing my morning poo. I check my eggs. Oh. Egg, egg. 
No. And then Danny Smith gives $5 and says, you guys do a TTRPG? We do, as it happens, Danny Smith. We it's do. It's called Adventure, Adventure is Nine. You can watch it on Second Wind every Saturday. That's right. We do an actual play TTRPG where we play the TTRPG of D&D. Mm-hmm. So we do an AP TTRPG of yeah, D&D. We do. Yeah, yeah, ASAP. <laughs> we do. Alex Armstrong. Yeah. Yes, Alex, moving on. Oh, yes, there I am there with my very unflattering hair. Oh, hey, right. there you go. Oh, yeah, because, you know, at the near the end of the shoot, we were all a big mess. So that happens. Mm. Alex Armstrong gives $5. It says, I also don't get how Pokemon's 100% completion turns me off, but Jiminy Cockthroat's like Far Cry and Spider-Man. I 100% and have so much fun. Am I racist? Possibly. Uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, you are racist because 100%. of that. You're racist against adorable creatures that somehow resemble foxes but aren't. <clears throat> well, it could be that in Far Cry and Spider-Man you do a bunch of different things to get to 100% completion. And also yeah, doing true. those things is fun, and not yeah. just cat- cataloging little monsters. Oh, there you go. That's a good word. Some some yeah. people like to catalog. Some people want to actively do something. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. Uh, SGS Crew 2000 gives two euros and adds, and Jay and John Claude Van Damme in Mortal Kombat 1 looks nothing like the real John Claude Van Damme. Yeah, it's, it, it's not a it's very... It's based uh, on when he played uh, Frank Du in Bloodsport, and Mortal Kombat was based on that movie. So it's all gone mm-hmm. back around. Mm. That's, why, that's why Johnny Cage <laughs> does his uh, split nut punch. Yes. Because that, of Jean the split. Now. The splits was his thing. He'd always find an excuse to do it, like in Time Cop, where he has to do it to avoid an electrified floor. Oh, you say that? You'd think, that, he'd, but... you'd think yeah, he could just, you know, <laughs> jump onto the kitchen to counter normally with both no, feet. He looks so good doing it. You know, he might as well. What was odd is they were trying to teach him how to fight, and he's like this super ripped dude, but he doesn't know how to fight at all. And we got to teach him. It's like, you must learn through dance. But he doesn't know how to dance either. So all he does is just like bounce doing splits. It's so like, great. sure, okay. It's Why so not? great. <laughs> um, Mappy1964 gives $5 and says, Yahtzee, regarding your double jump comments, how often do you think it might be included due to the fact that gamers expect it to be there? Okay, I was being a little bit facetious when I said that whenever a Metroidvania game comes up with the double jump, you know that's the point where it ran out of ideas. Mm. And I, just, like, I saw a very offended thread on Reddit. I was like, how... What's wrong with double jumps? Uh, this is why he's not a real critic. <laughs> they always do that, don't they? Yeah. He didn't like something, he's not a real critic anymore. They took away your credentials, Yats. <laughs> yes. It was a funny gag along the lines of the old man Murray start to create gag. We should bring that back. Maybe they just don't get the reference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Race to the double jump. Like, how fast? How soon? How soon, you get, how soon do you get double jumps in games? I think, yeah, a lot of... Um, games have double jumps because uh, a lot of games feel like they're sort of missing them now if you don't have them. Oh, I think you're missing it if you don't do ledge grabbing. I, I think, yeah, more so what we were talking about earlier with Metroidvanias and just like you need visual progression and just making a ledge a little taller is really easy to do. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, you know, yeah. I think it's also that there's a greater sense of control when you have a double jump. You jump mm-hmm. once, and then you can correct your trajectory with the second jump. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. It's a superpower. It's great. Mm. Uh, Sebastian Mikulek gives $2 and says, Crafting is cancer. Keep it in survival games only. I guess Arr. intellectually, I find it hard to understand why it's so automatically successful, crafting as a mechanic. Because really, it's just another way of exchanging it's stuff the ultimate fantasy. something else. I like I've just made something. You know? Yeah, but it's but you're not, are you? You're just saying but I've got five wood. <laughs> I've got five wood, but and I'm I going am. to exchange that five wood for a chair. It's God, just yeah. the Stick same as together. buying, but wood is the currency. Yeah, no, but, but it's I, just me. I got I, that wood though. <laughs> my generation grew up. Yeah, on... I got currency from by working a job. <laughs> That's fair. My generation grew up on Survivor Man, Bear versus Bear versus Wild. Man versus wild bear grills. Bears, bear grills. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just and it, to us, it's it, you might as well have just been sticking them together, just like that. And it's like, oh, you know, he's got a gun now. Yeah. These two sticks, 
Uh, uh, that's why I love video stupid. games where you have to pee on your shirt and wrap it around your head. Oh, yes. A little Bear Grylls humor right there. There you go. There are I, thought some games, was, though, I thought harder. that was Total Recall. <laughs> Both. There are Wait, some games, though, that are just crafting, like uh, he had to wrap a. Oh, he had to wrap something around his head, but I don't think he peed on it. He did not pee on it. He just had to wrap a wet towel around his head to block his tracker. Where they could have peed on what? it. What? Why did the? Why did that stop it? Because it was in his head. So the tracker was, like, was in his head, and so it created like you know, like it just created a a, a distance a barrier. You know, it was like it was like a tinfoil hat. It's it's a know. cheesy sci-fi movie. It doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I didn't know. Oh, okay. The principle of the tinfoil hat. It was it like. Uh, and it didn't entirely block the signal. It just sort of expanded the area that he could be in. Yeah, on, just on the... weakened it so he was able to escape. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, this is a movie that also contains a lady with three boobs. Yes. So. And uh, etc. <laughs> Alex Armstrong gives five dollars. They're speaking of Pal World's final boss. I can't get into Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom because I'm so used to the linearity of older Zelda games. Am I stubborn or just boring? Both. <laughs> Both, or you're used to a specific thing. You may just not be. You're not being offered what you what you came here for, right? Are you overwhelmed by choice? You could just play Half Life or something. There, yes. No. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> in in art, you as an audience member, you as a player, need to sign in somehow. You need to accept the terms and condition. I am going to sit in this movie theater and watch the movie. I am going to engage in the gameplay mechanics. If you're not willing to do so, that's fine. But you have to be willing to engage with the mechanics as as hmm. a, a a bare minimum. And so, yes, I'm saying you are boring because you are unwilling to engage with the mechanics. All right, then. And stubborn. <laughs> oh, God. Every time I think we're getting close to the end, a few more pop in. Oh, uh, the no. dogmatic director gives. Money. Yes, it's so painful. I wish they'd stop. <laughs> <laughs> the dogmatic director gives $2 and says, I can't get into GTA types unless it's Saints Row 4. Funny, All that's right the then. one that broke me. Yeah, I was like, I don't really get these. And then Saints Row played it. I just they just went even more extreme with it. I was like, okay. Well, it's because it's more fun. It's more of a superhero sandbox game than uh, than a GTA knockoff at that it's point. Like, it's like how I feel with with like a dragon, where I go, okay, this is very narrative heavy, but they're so over the top with it. It's like I, I can I can accept this. Yeah, my uh, review of the new one. It seems to be going against the grain a bit from what I've seen. Because well, um, I, I, no, well, as I, I actually say in the review at one point, if it's the first Yakuza game you ever play, like basically every Yakuza game, it'll probably blow your mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Sorry. Right. But I was, uh, I've, as someone who played like a Dragon One, I was a little bit disappointed because I didn't feel like it differentiated itself enough. Oh, sure. Valid. Yeah. Sure, sure. But anyway. Uh, Alex Armstrong gives $5 and says, speaking of Metroidvanias, I still think that reverse progression idea you had could still work. Just need some good level design that works with it. That's just pizza tower. If you like. Now, my idea was um, reverse leveling, like for like an action RPG. Like you start off with all the abilities. You can double jump. You can like, oh. parry. You can, right. you got super attacks. You got fireballs. You got a bunch of spells and stuff. But at the end of every level, you get severely injured and have to remove one of your upgrades. That's interesting. The one so I, by, uh, the demo so by I the end trying. of it, you can just move and hit things with a sword, and you just have to oh. adapt. <laughs> yeah, like you'd have to be really good with with your game design and also your psychology, because gamers don't like frustration and losing power. So if you could pull that off, oh man, I, oh. I was. That's where I think people should experiment: is uh, get getting players to give stuff up, because mm. I think that's just mm. something we don't explore. Well, theoretically, you could make them feel more powerful because they would be doing similar things with less superpowers. Sure, 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 sure. So, like, yeah, it's it's possible. It's an interesting yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, that was the theory, at least. Mm. Mm. Uh, Yellow Jello goes five dollars and says, "Why did we never get co-op Hitman missions? Taking on targets specifically crafted for two people to take out would be amazing. I you would like... need a really, really." high degree of communication between the two players for something like that and if you don't you, 
the amount of design you'd have to put into it because like one person sure like there's 500 options now two people oh christ like uh, that would just be yeah, really now there's 500 test, times it? 500 options yeah and oh, uh, man. taking into account any sort of server lag you would almost have to do it turn-based to make sure that you know like hey i pressed that i pressed the the uh, make the paint fall down button like three seconds ago and and that you were supposed to uh, hit mm -hmm. it with the mop or whatever and it's like that that kind of lag could never happen in a game that's so coordinated what's that one co-op game you both are like thieves or assassins or something. You have to lock in because of that, because they know that you won't be able to do the timing right. So they just, both of you lock in and it plays a little cutscene. So yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. not, it's just difficult to get through that and make it organic and still active, dynamic there. Uh, you could be think, talking about a few games there. Uh, what was that terrible one that came before It Takes Two? It takes One. The, the one that was a ripoff of the Shawshank Redemption for half of it. Oh, pris uh, prison. Uh, it was it just uh, called Prison Break? <laughs> no, a way cool. out. It was called a way out. A way out. Gordon. Prison Break was the TV show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that game was amazingly bad, and it's doubly amazing that the next game <laughs> those guys produced was It Takes Two, which was like Game of the Year. They figured it out. Divorce yeah, they, they figured it out. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> well, uh, that's the end of the Super Chats. We finally got there. Boom. So we let's quickly it. wrap up before they add any more. Uh, thank you for listening to the Windbreakers podcast. I was Yati Crozier. I was joined by Sebastian Ruiz. Indeed. And Jack Packard standing in for Marty this week. I'm a lesser Marty. To the other Man, Marty. That's a depressing thought. Oh. <laughs> yeah thanks everybody uh for for watching listening to this later uh we appreciate that support remember uh if you like this kind of stuff head over to our patreon uh and uh if you uh, uh don't then you know keep watching and uh, out of spite i guess sure and now <laughs> is the time we plug all our stuff so tune in <laughs> on wednesday for my next fully ramblematic episode which will be on the subject of like a dragon uh i almost did infinite warfare there infinite wealth <laughs> I will also be streaming a couple of games in Yahtzee Tries. I don't know what yet. Um, that's one of the things I need to figure out, probably today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think that's all I've got, uh, besides Adventurers Nigh on Saturday, which I am in. Uh, I think this will be the last old episode before we could start bringing out new episodes. Of Adventurers Nigh? Yes, I think I'm right in saying. You are correct. This, yes. Saturday's Adventures Night is episode eight, which was the last of the aired episodes, which means that not this upcoming Saturday, but next Saturday, the uh, next Saturday, the 10th, will be the first unseen, never before seen episode of Adventures Night. Y'all, it is so exciting. Uh, the animations look phenomenal. Um, uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna be big. Gonna be huge. Gonna be big. Uh, catch up now. Let's go. You're going <laughs> to love it. You're going. You're going to be shocked. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Um, uh, Frost, plug some stuff. Yo, plug and stuff. All right, go watch the newest cold take. Fresh out the kitchen. This is not a remix, this is a proper look. 60 hours in the POW world because I have a problem. Uh, a specialization, maybe I just need rehabilitation. That's how it goes. And as far as streams are going to go, um, definitely the ones that are planned are going to be, I imagine, Shoot the Shit. That's going to be on Thursday, Friday. That's, mm -hmm. that's uh, next where we just got, it's like part shooter, part podcaster. The first person podcaster. And then you got yourself on Saturdays, Better With Friends, going to be Will and I, and then newly released on Sunday with Amy. That's the usual. So nice. come back here to Second Wind for more content every day. And uh, come back later today at 6pm for Hidden Gems, where we'll be playing Oblivion Override, according to Nick. Ooh. At 6pm CT, we should we stress. Great. Uh, Liam Ster Liam's, oh, here's some last-minute super chats. Liam Sterling gave us £2, and then their message was deleted. Someone made an asshole comment, apparently, but uh, it's hey, just... It was on the border. It, it was on the border. <laughs> Let's move on Boulder's Brass. Yeah. Pierre Pyro gives two euros as Jack might be the only one who gets Duskers. 
That's right. Phenomenal game. You know what's up. Yeah, I played that for a bit. I could see myself getting into that. I tried to yeah. play it with a podcast in the background, but it didn't really fit that particular setting for no, me. No, not that vibe. No, it's more oh, of a horror game. thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Oscars. The good game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, beneath 1111 gives 20 Swedish Kronen and says, love to see more Mortimer natties. Oh, yeah, it's a big Mortimer couple of episodes coming up. Mortimer's getting all his payoffs. Oh, man. For, for, for anyone all... who knows, episode seven was all the planning of the high, of the uh, or episode eight is all the planning of the heist. In episode nine, you get to see how the heist turns out. And by the way, yes. oh, you won't you won't be prepared for the craziness in episode mm-hmm. nine. We've been building up a lot of important Mortimer character shit this season, and uh, yeah, how painful it was to think we might not be able to end the season without paying all that off, but now we can, so we're, it's very nice. It's very, very nice. Yeah, very good times. And uh, I think that'll be it from us for now. See you next time, chaps. And well. chapettes. And chapatas. Balls.